All right. That's uh, kind of the dream we have around here. Each one of you are a walking deliverance ministry. So no matter where you go, you uh, go in there and take over some ground. That's why I was telling the YouTube people about terror cells. Just open up your own little terror cell in your church. And uh, God will select people out for you for them to be healed. Happens all the time. The problem is nobody gets around to doing it, and so nothing happens. So what we're trying to do here is give you some training so you can go ahead and crank it. Yeah. We don't want to be, like Paul said, ever learning and never coming to the full knowledge of the truth. We don't want to do that. We want to learn and go. You know, there's no gift of deliverance. Uh, you don't have to have the gift of healing for people to get healed. Uh, some Indian gal got healed last night in her knees. I don't have the gift of healing, so I just prayed for her and she got healed. So every Christian can do Mark 16, every Christian that wants to. The Christians that don't want to, they don't get nothing. That's how it works. You're the boss. So she shows up at the conference and bang. Yeah, Mari Mar Marillo knows all about this stuff, but he doesn't do it, you know, because he doesn't want to get the boot. But he's probably the best preacher in the country, the most anointed preacher. He's the most anointed preacher I've ever seen run around America. He's the best in the business, as far as I know. <clears throat> All right, just a couple of quickies here. Now, anybody here doing counseling? Well, that's it. Oh. Well, anyway, maybe I'll skip that. All right, uh, just for an FYI section here. Uh, during COVID in Moscow City, Idaho, I didn't even know there was a Moscow City, Idaho, till I read this decision. But anyway, uh, they issued a, uh, the city issued an ordinance saying that during COVID, you have to wear a mask and social distance. And then they had an outdoor church service in a parking lot. And then the uh, city pitched a fit about it, told the cops to break it up, and then they arrested three people for organizing the group because they weren't wearing a mask and they weren't social distancing. And that decision came out a couple of weeks ago, they sued the city and won. The judge dismissed the case and the uh, liability carrier for the city settled it for 300 grand a head because they determined that they had violated their constitutional rights of free assembly, you know, and so that was a win. You know, they were outside on top of that. You know, we all know how that stuff went now. What a joke. <clears throat> uh, in 2022, uh, the Department of Education put a ban on uh, trans women in sports in Florida trans women. Um, they're really men and they're breaking all the records and stealing all the trophies and everything. Nobody's getting winning anything. Uh, the whole thing is, is shocking. Um, but anyway, um, in the bad news section, a district judge overturned it. So they lost that case. What happens is, uh, I think the World Cup just started, didn't it, for women? Soccer? Anybody follow that? It just started, right? 
Yeah, the World Cup in soccer, the women, the women have the best team in the world. They're the best there is. Uh, I think they've won it twice. They'll probably win it this time. Gold medals, right? Yep. Top-notch women. And uh, trained for the World Cup. The women uh, practiced against uh, all-star high school boys. High school boys. Uh, they lost every match. Eight to one, nine to two. All of them were blowouts. High school boys, not men. Boys. Yeah. So as soon as you start letting trans women in women's sports, it's going to be a slaughter. Okay. And there's nothing wrong with that. Women are much better than men in numerous areas. Yeah. See how I covered that? <laughs> Take some notes. But men are better than women in certain areas. Yeah. One of them is testosterone. God gave the man testosterone because back in the day, they had to fight all the wars, kill all the elephants, bring home, <laughs> bring home the buffalo, whatever it was. I'm oversimplifying everything, but the point simply is this whole thing is satanic. There's a difference between men and women. God created them that way. And there's only two genders. This is all going to get deleted. There's only two genders. <laughs> And all of it is the devil moving in on us, trying to steal what God said. Did God say that? That's what he said in the Garden of Eden. Did he say that? Are you sure he said that? There's only a male and female. Sure about that? Here he goes. In Oregon, the governor just recently signed a bill allowing kids in school, juveniles, to get abortions in secret. So the parents are, have been moved out of the system in Oregon. Just happened two weeks ago. Okay. So, unbelievable. <clears throat> the satanic church was in the news. They sued the state of Texas. No reason I'm doing this because you said you wanted to hear it last time. Remember that? I asked if you wanted to hear it. Anybody here not getting mad at me? Okay. The Satanic Church in Texas filed a lawsuit. Texas passed a law on abortion, and it said at a certain amount of weeks, the mother has to get a sonogram by law now before they can uh, get an abortion. Okay, well, the Satanic Church tried to circumvent it and uh, claim that abortion in their church is, is a protected religious ritual, similar to a communion and water baptism. And therefore, separation of church and state, state the tech, state of Texas is not allowed to uh, block their religious rituals. And they lost. The federal judge threw the case out, and so that's a win for the good guys won that one. In Maine, the governor just passed a bill allowing abortion up to nine months. Maine now joins California, Colorado, Minnesota, Washington. Maryland and New Mexico. So you can get an abortion in those states legally as the baby's coming down the birth canal or whatever it is. Nine months gone. The other states, you can't do that. You're going to, you run the risk of getting murder charges or manslaughter charges or something like that. But in these states I just listed off, no problem. Uh, Barna, you ever read any of their surveys? The Barna group? Nobody? Oh. 
I do radio shows on them all the time. They take religious surveys, nationwide surveys, the Barna Group. They took a poll in 2015 and 2022, and they asked pastors of churches, hundreds of them, about these subjects, loneliness, being supported, having close friends, physical health, and mental health. And from 2015 to 2022, uh, there was a huge drop in every area. For example, loneliness was reported in 42% of the pastors in 2015. It went up to 65% in 2022. And uh, 5,000 ministers leave the ministry every year in the United States. Every year, 5,000 of them hit, bit the dust. <clears throat> Why is that? People are sick. <laughs> Pastors send people over here. They don't call. They don't want me. They just say, go to the Delivered Center. <laughs> Ask for Mike. I then tell them to see Kelly. <laughs> Why are they doing that? Our society, as you know, is going to hell in a handbasket. Satan's taking the planet over. And everybody is 10 times sicker now than they were in the 1950s. And pastors don't know what to do with these people. They're mentally ill, they're emotionally ill, they don't listen, they're chock full of demons. Nobody does demons, no one can help them. So they're looking for a dumping ground, and uh, that would be me. I would be their dumping ground. But the point is, you can see the church deteriorating. They're getting out of the ministry. People are crazy, and they can't take them anymore. How about some Mormon news? That didn't go over. This building we bought from the Mormons. Remember that? Yeah. I bought this from the Mormons, and uh, Mormons are not like any other cult. Okay? They're very smart and very wealthy. Lots of powerful business people are Mormons. Okay? They're all strictly, strict tithers and donors. Okay, they're not like uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses where you got hit and miss and churches where it's all hit and miss, not Mormons. They line up. I had to bid four times on this building to get it. Four times. Somebody must have looked up my website and they didn't want me. I said, well, Lord, you're going to have to I don't know all I can do. You have to, you have to move, make your move. The fourth bid, the fourth offer crashed. They said, well, let's reluctantly give it to this guy. That's how we got it. Uh, when I signed for the property, I signed a special petition to find the uh, plates from Moroni. And they claimed they didn't have them. I wanted those plates because I wanted the you know, facility to become trillionaires. That's how much we could get on the antiquities market for those golden plates. They don't know where they are, they claimed. <laughs> Jeez. I told them, listen, you tell me where the plates are, I'm going to call Dr. Fauci. <laughs> By 2044, based on their investments, the church will be worth $1 trillion. The Mormons got in trouble with the SEC. They were hiding millions of dollars in shell companies, fake companies. So the government didn't know how much money they had, so they didn't have to pay any taxes on anything. Well, they got caught, and then somebody started auditing the Mormons and found out that if they don't take in another penny, 
ever, they'll have $1 trillion by 2044. That's how rich they are. But, you know, they're, they're down one building. <laughs> All right. Let me stick that in your ear. Okay. Did you get your hand out? Anybody not get their hand out? All right. Now, uh, has everybody seen me explain this before? I heard no's. <laughs> now, <sighs> what it is is this. <laughs> this is a human being. Use your faith. All humans are made just like this. They have five parts, and uh, these are your five parts, right? And they're all important parts because your conscience is the center of your morality. Your soul is the centerpiece of your emotions. Your mind is the centerpiece of your free will and your intelligence. Your spirit man is your centerpiece of your spirituality, all contained in your body. When you become a born-again Christian, the only thing about you that's saved is this part. The rest of you is in rebellion. So after the Holy Spirit enters your spirit man and you become a born-again Christian, from that day forward, you are a child of God. And you're no longer a Smith or a Jones or a Hernandez. You are now in the family of God. Your parents are no longer your parents. Your Heavenly Father is your parent. Unfortunately, this is the only thing about the person that's saved. This has to be renewed. This has to be restored. Your body has to be healed. Your conscience has to be mended for you to fulfill your destiny. That's why God requires you to become a student of the Word, to get filled with the Holy Ghost, to get your soul wounds healed, and your conscience mended. Because when you were a sinner, your conscience was seared, and you kept sinning because you were a sinner. That's what sinners do. Huh? Now that you're saved, none of this happens overnight. Huh? It's a process of restoration. So you can have somebody with a powerful spirit man which contains all of your spiritual gifts and your fruit, who is also a pervert, correct? Because demons enter the body or the brain, causing a mental or physical disability. Hence, one of the benefits of the gospel is deliverance, which we do here occasionally. Once you get the spirit of infirmity out of the body, the body heals. Once you get the demons out of the body that are attacking the soul, the person's emotions mend and cure, right? Once you get the demons out of the person's brain, their mind is restored. And so your job and why you're here today is to learn this, which is spiritual warfare, and learn to help others, like Kelly said at the seminar. Okay. And this is the nuts and bolts of your ministry. If you don't understand how this works, you're going to be chronically, constantly confused about people, because people are weird. <laughs> I mean, they're nuts, and a lot of them are in your family. 
Okay? So the Holy Spirit's here, and the benefit of that is you are perfect in the eyes of God. This is perfect. This is under construction, reconstruction, not this. It never gets any better, even when you get to heaven. It stays the same, perfect. By definition, you cannot improve on perfect, correct? If something's 100%, that's it. There's no, right? <laughs> You are perfect. The demons keep telling you you're not because they keep pointing here. Okay. And if you believe that, you're screwed. And you don't get any benefits from God. And you die a failure. You're a failure. Because you believe lies. If you believe the truth, that you're perfect to God, and that's how he sees you as perfect. You can get your prayers answered, and you can get healed or delivered or whatever you need. Bang. So at the altar last night, you saw a bunch of demons coming out of people. None of them were in here. Because they can't get in there. The Holy Spirit's in there. Christians can't be possessed, but they can be infected. Infected. And you're, you're going to uninfect them. That's what you're going to do, right? You're an uninfector. <laughs> yeah. You're a walking can, can of raid. Be healed. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, I'm done with that then. Yeah. All right, now let's uh, walk it through. Here's your birthday. You were born in a dysfunctional family. Okay? Your parents are screwed up. So your parents had spirits, here they are, that came down from their family tree, right? Uh, last night some girl's granddad was a shaman or something, okay, family tree up here. Well, the demons come down the family tree and then they get into you when you're a kid. And uh, they hide in your body. They get in there and they hide. These hide. These attack. Depression, loneliness, fear, all these horrible emotions. <clears throat> they split duties, you know. This one's a SEAL team. These, this is military. This is infantry. The infantry are launching attacks against you. Uh, you're being bullied. You're, you're afraid. Your parents are hurting you. You're, you're scared. Uh, all these, but these spirits are hiding in there. They take a deep dive and they don't do anything. They don't do anything. Why are they hiding? Well, as you grow up, you start picking up more spirits. Now you're an adult. Now you're committing adultery, stealing, cursing, swearing, getting drunk, using, and so on. So you're now front-loading spirits in layers. Now you're stacking them in your brain and in your body. You're loading them up as you continue to sin. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. But these hidden spirits are an insurance policy for here if you get born again. So hypothetically, this happened to you. You're born again, aren't you? 
Yeah, you were born here. The spirits got in here. You were born again here. Okay? So now, <clears throat> after you're born again, they say, hey, you know what you need, boy? You need to go to church. So now the church and you start working on the obvious stuff they're doing. You got a temper problem? Are you lazy? You overeat? You use? Whatever, whatever is obvious sin. It's obvious that's wrong. Okay, you're yelling at your mom, you're cursing out somebody, you've, you've got a rage. It's obvious it's wrong. So the church then works with you in a partnership to screw you up. So they work on getting you to fix these pitiful character traits, your, your sliding scale conscience, your physical misbehaviors, your attitudes, and your big mouth, and they try to fix it by giving you a Bible study, a great uh, seminar to go to with lots of people dancing and doing car wheels, great, reading the word, going to Sunday school, getting a handout, what, everything. Then they'll throw in some Christmas programs on top of it. Nativity scene, nail you with that one. All these church programs trying to fix what is obviously wrong with the person. And what are they doing? Missing what's really wrong with them. The ones that went dormant. What, what did they do? They don't start manifesting until after the person's born again. So the person calls the pastor at the church. Hey, pastor, I got saved two months ago, and my life is a wreck. Everything keeps going wrong. What's the problem? After I got saved, I got sick. After I got saved, I got financial problems. After I got saved, my wife left. What is going on here? The pastor goes, blah, 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 blah. He has no idea. And like a politician, he gives you a bunch of religious gobbledygook. What actually happened was the dormant ones now are in charge. And the person in the church doesn't know they have them. They're lost. Who doesn't know they have them? All of them. Catholics, Orthodox, Baptists, clueless. What's going on here? Your childhood, parents, family tree, let them in, and now they're going to do everything they can to stop your Christian life, and they'll do anything to stop it. Because they will be damned if you are going to amount to anything. It's not going to happen. And since nobody knows they're there, they work with it impunity. No one knows they're there. Brother Mike, you're not going to believe it. I just married this person. They're so sweet and nice. I woke up yesterday. Charles Manson was in my bed. Oh, really? Well, when you married this person, sucker, you married their whole family tree. And all the spiritual activity in that tree. And these things that were dormant when they, you were dating them aren't dormant anymore. So this sweet, loving person you thought you married is now a turbo biatch, yeah. a cycle. 
He was so sweet to me when we were dating. He gave me candy and flowers. <laughs> oh, that's nice. No, it wasn't. It was a setup. Give her candy. Give her flowers. We want you to marry this person. We got plans for you. Boom. It's all planned out from childhood. They're that smart. Ever since I met this person, I don't know, I've been get, I get grumpy now. I'm grumpy. I got attitude. I don't know what's wrong with me. Wow. Well, in, instead of coming down through the family tree, which they're not anymore, now you're picking them up here during intercourse. Screaming and arguing. Fighting. They just keep transferring in. But it doesn't make any sense. I'm born again. In spirit you are, not the rest of it. I'm in church all the time. Oh, you're in church all the time. That'll fix it. Not likely. God's people perish for lack of knowledge. Their goal, jack, your, jack you up <laughs> until you're dead. <laughs> no, another Christian life wasted. No, no destiny. God had all these plans for you, and they stole it because nobody knew they were there. Once you become born again, the demons go, hey, we're not going to use this stuff on you anymore. Yeah, they'll catch that. We're not going to have the old drug dealer come by and see you. No, no, no. That's too obvious. Yeah. We're going to send some ministers in to infect you. Let's have a fire tunnel. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's go lay hands on everybody. Okay. <laughs> they don't use the old stuff anymore. That's not going to work on you. They use religious stuff on you. What kind of religious stuff? Wonderfulness. Great stuff. Wow. We're part of the seven mountains. We're going to take over the planet. The whole country is going to be Christian soon. And we're going to take over media and the banking industry. Boy. Stupid. Christian gobbledygook, hyperventilation, grandiosity, sweeping through the church. Why are they doing that? Well, because they don't want you to focus on your temper problem, your stupid Christian beliefs, getting loaded up with the Holy Ghost, going through deliverance and getting them out, because you're too busy studying your seven mountains. Oh. We're going to take over the media. Now, I don't think TikTok agrees with you. Mm -hmm. 
Why doesn't somebody stop this? It seems so simple, Brother Mike. Is it? Really? What I just told you, virtually no one knows. I'm not kidding. Why don't they know it? They don't want it out there. They're not stupid. Christians are stupid. Demons are not stupid. They don't do stuff, stupid stuff. They plan stuff out. Okay. That's what Jesus said. Listen, <clears throat> the ground, the God's word falls on different ground. It's the same word, but it falls on different ground. What's the ground? What's the ground? Use you. You. Ground, ground, ground. You can take the same Bible verse, click, click, and get three different results. Some of the word falls on people who couldn't give a rat's fanny about it. I don't care. The birds come along. Up, 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 up. It's gone. Picks it right up. Jesus who? Gone. Just like that. Right away. Two days later, nothing there. Huh? Right? Yeah. Same word. It sticks. Uh-oh, red five alarm fire. They, they make their move. What happens next? Thorns grow up. The cares of this life. I gotta have a career. I gotta have my kids. I gotta do, I need a new car. I need I need. I gotta get busy with life. Thorns grow up. Choke out the word. I don't know what's going on here. This this spouse is no good. I gotta get another one. This one sucks. This spouse really sucks. He's worse than the previous suck. I gotta get another one. <laughs> You know how much time and energy and money it takes to recruit and train another spouse? <laughs> That's a full-time job. <laughs> By the time you're born again, you can't lose half your stuff in life too often before you're dead. We call that a divorce. Where, where'd the couch go? <laughs> I've heard it a dozen times over the years. As soon as I went down the altar and dedicated my life, Lord, I, everything fell apart on me. I had to do this. I had to do that. I, I had to fix that. My kids did this. My spouse did that. <laughs> my job required me to go. <laughs> what do you think is going on there? Nobody knows they're there. It chokes out the word. Thorns grow up. Right? The cares of this life, the lust of other things, crop up and choke out God's word. Oh, that's, that's wrong, Brother Mike. I'm word of faith. God's word does not return to me void. Ugh. Take that, Brother Mike. No, you take that. That verse does not work. That is not true. You can quote the Bible till your face falls off and nothing's going to happen. Right. Jehovah Witnesses and Mormons, they quote the Bible. And it does them absolutely no good. The Word of God is useless unless you apply it. Come on now, Catholic spouse, they use the Bible sometimes, right? Once in a great while, somebody will pull out their Latin version of the New Testament and quote something out of it, you know. Jesus said, feed the poor. Come on. These demons have no problem with the Bible and couldn't care less about it until somebody starts to actually read it and do it. Then the alarms go off. 
Now you're in trouble. You're drawing attention from the dark side. Jesus said, you are my friends if you do what I told you. That's when hell comes to breakfast. As long as you're letting the word choke out and they're keeping you nice and busy with the kids, with the career, with the flat tires, with the house payment, with, with the hemorrhoids, as long as you're busy with your health, they'll choke it right out. Gone. Killing time until you drop dead. And there goes another life. No destiny. Gone. Stolen. A thief comes to steal. They want to steal your time. What do they got to do? Well, they make an analysis of you and they figure out what, what do you like to spend your time on? What is it? They don't care. They just want to give it to you. I like to pass out tracks at the mall, Brother Mike. Oh, they heard you. The demons heard you. They'll start pointing you to malls. Hey, what about Arrowhead Mall? Go up to Arrowhead Mall. Put tracks out in the cars. Put them, put them up there. Go ahead. You can just throw them up there if you want to. Just pitch them. What aren't you doing? Getting them out of here. I think I'll order Joyce Myers' Battlefield of the Mind. Yeah. Oh, okay. Who told you to do that? They did. Go ahead and read it. They'll help you read it. As long as they don't have to come out of there. They don't care if you read Battlefield of the Mind or the Waterloo or Alamo. They don't care what you read. Leave me alone. Well, I'm going to pay the devil back. I'm going to feed the poor. Oh, that'll get, that'll get them all shook up. Right. They don't care. As long as they don't have to leave. That book they hate when he's holding up right there. Yeah. yeah. That guy, that guy, huh? Thank you. That guy saw right through him. Yeah. yeah. That, that's one of the top guys. No question. He wouldn't word it like I'm wording, but essentially this is it, how they work. All right, this looks hopeless. It is not. These spirits all leave behind breadcrumbs, so to speak, symptoms. And if you learn to track them, you can catch them. So you go to Galatians. Right? And you read the nine fruits of the Spirit. You ever read that? Of course you have. Everybody has. The fruits of the Holy Ghost living in here. Huh? Now what kind of a person are they, are they? They would be the opposite of that. The exact opposite. All right. First one would be love. Love. Second one would be joy. Hello. Third, peace. Good. Now, what's the opposite of love? Hate. 
you got him. You got him. Is any of that in here? Are you experiencing any of that? All you got to do is track them. If it's hate, it can't be from here. Correct? The Holy Ghost doesn't have hate. So it can't be him. And your spirit man doesn't have any hate. Right? And the opposite of joy is Sorry. What'd you say? What is it? The opposite of joy would be Sorrow. Yeah. Sorrow, depression, right? Okay. Is there any of that here? Anywhere? It can't be coming out of here. But are you experiencing is the person you're ministering to experiencing any of that? Okay, if they are, you're, you, caught, you caught them. Is this little guy listening to me right now? Is he worried? No, he's not really, not yet. Because he knows nobody's going to do this. Why not? People, by nature, don't like to look at themselves. So they're not panicking right now with me, and they're not really mad at me. Because they know nobody's going to do anything. Because humans, by nature, are experts at analyzing other people not themselves. The only way to track them is by analyzing yourself. So if I have hate, which I used to have, and I got it out by going through deliverance, I now therefore know personally what that's like, and I can help him. Her, them. Because I experienced it myself, personally. Why is marriage so bad? I just told you, people by nature tend to analyze others before they analyze themselves. So it's easy to spot flaws in the spouse and very hard to see flaws in, the, in yourself. Wigglesworth would come home and if his wife didn't fix the meal properly, he'd file a complaint. And start griping about it. His wife let it roll. Just kept praying for him. Well, one day God spoke to him at church and said, Hey, dude, you got a bad temper on you. And you're going nowhere until this is fixed. So miraculously, Wigglesworth, instead of looking at his wife's cooking, looked at himself. What happened? Went on a 10-day fast. His wife said he never complained ever about a meal ever again. Said he was a completely different person. Now, how did that happen? Well, a miracle happened. He looked at himself. Can you imagine somebody actually looking at themselves? That's not going to happen, but if you believe in Red Sea miracles, once in a while, it'll happen. Hey, 
Am I at fault? No, can't. What? Stupid. You go to a big seminar like Kelly did. What's the ultimate goal there? Get people off their dead butts. Church people are so lazy. They got to constantly be pumped. And it's not just church people. It's regular people. Tony Robbins has, is a multi-millionaire pumping people. Because he knows people are fat, stupid, and lazy. But you can temporarily motivate them. Boom. Well, that's what they did with Kelly. Oh, they're jumping around and dancing. And it's fun. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying put it in perspective. This is what's happening. And this isn't curing anything. Hello? Okay, you can cartwheel up and down these halls and howl at the moon for two hours. They will howl with you. <laughs> Praise God. Oh boy, I don't like this, but let's put up with it because we'll, we'll get him later. And they got him later. What's the opposite of peace? Yeah, you just caught him. You got him. If that person or you has that, as part of their personality, what's that telling you? Oops, you caught him. You got him. Okay, let's try a fourth one. Anybody up for a fourth one? Go. Kindness. Hmm? Kindness. Kindness. What's it would be the opposite of that? You caught him. You got him. Meanness. If you or somebody else has that part of their personality, it can't be coming from God. And if you don't like it, it's not coming from you. Somebody's giving it to you. The dormant ones. Next. Hmm? What do you say? All right. Let's go with temperance then. What would be the opposite of that? Yeah, they're control freaks. Con self control, out of control. Self control. Addictions, self-control, obsessive compulsive thoughts, self-control, bad habits, self-control, drink too much, eat too much, talk too much, think too much, talk. They're control freaks. You got him. Brother Mike, I can't help myself. Got him. You got him. Where's the jack? I got to settle down. Ooh, got him. Control freaks. Anything that's out of control is them. Because God gave you your mind and he said, you control it. It's yours to control. No, it's ours. We're going to put thoughts in your mind. We're going to make you think stupid things. We're going to make you think mean things. Nasty things, perverted things, fearful things. You caught him. 
it's them. So if that person you're ministering to has these symptoms, their symptoms, you know what to do. Don't you? They have to come out. I hate to say it, but it isn't rocket science. Is goodness one of them? Well, hmm? What's that? What's that? What's the next one? Faith. Faith. Faithfulness. Wow. Faithfulness. What's the opposite of that? Unfaith. You can't trust them. They'll screw you over in a heartbeat. They're not mad at me right now because I know what they're thinking. Brother Mike, these people you're talking to, these suckers are too lazy to do anything about it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it because you came here to listen to me. You know what you're going to get when I'm around. Something weird, something unusual, something blunt. You showed up here. I didn't drag you here. <clears throat> They're lying. You are not too lazy to do something about it. If you were, you wouldn't have shown up here. You are going to do something about it. And you do it by tracking. See? You pretend you're the United States Post Office. <laughs> I have my little flash drive I sell. I get an order. I put it in a little yellow envelope about that big. <laughs> Drop the flash drive in. Put the address on it. I've got a master's degree. Put the address on there. Take it to the post office. And the lady asked me, do you want tracking with us? <laughs> I say yes. Tracking. Well, that's going to cost you five fifteen. Five fifteen. <laughs> if you don't track them, it's going to cost you a lot more than five fifteen. It's going to cost you your destiny. You better put a tracking number on this thing, like the post office. Okay. You better start liking the post office because I heard UPS is going on strike. Did they go on strike? Not yet. I heard, was today the deadline? Or is it it's Monday? Uh, I think it's Monday. The Teamsters are about to pull the plug on the country. So be nice to your post guy. They all voted for Biden. You put a tracking number on these demons, how do you track them? Here's your code. I got a code on my flash drive. She pulls it out of the machine and sticks it on there. Professional sticky. It won't come off. Top of the line stick. <laughs> it's got a car barcode on there. And underneath it says uh, property of Antichrist. No, it's got a barcode on there. <laughs> and if, if you scan that code, the computer picks it up, and then you know where your thing is, where, where, where they've lost it. <laughs> this is your code, LJP. See, this is your barcode. Okay. Tracking them. This is how you can tell you know they're there. <clears throat> On all my other wives, yeah. not this one, all the other ones, <laughs> <laughs> I used to hate being yelled at. <laughs> that bothered me. Mike, can you do, will you? <laughs> You're just like scratching the chalkboard. <laughs> that bothered me. Why'd that bother me? 
bothered him. He hated my ex-wives more than I hated them. <laughs> they told me to hate them. What was I doing? Taking offenses. Oh, that's something that the barcode will pick up. Taking offenses. Ooh. Nothing's changed. Karen yells at me. Mike! My response is different. Yes. I stop what I'm doing and prepare to do something else. When I hear that voice, it kind of comes into me. There it is. Track them. The easiest way to do it is through their emotions. This is how they manipulate people through their emotions. They put a thought in your mind, and it's a fearful thought, and fear comes out of your soul. They put a thought in your mind, dread. Oh my God, what if my daughter gets in a car wreck? <sighs> you see that? They're controlling you because you didn't renew your mind, and you're receiving thoughts that are negative or fearful. And once you receive it, they attack your soul, and the soul emotion makes the thought real. As I mentioned last time, in the psychology field, they call them phobias. A phobia is real, but only to that person. It's only real to the person and the demons who gave it to them, fear demons. Phobias are real, but not to anybody else. I'm afraid of the dark. That's your phobia. Nobody else is afraid of the dark. That's you. Listening to them, not tracking it. You're not tracking. Here. It's easy to help somebody. What's bothering you? Well, you know what? I'm, a, I'm afraid of Martians. Oh, you're afraid of Martians. Okay, now what's that telling me? Well, we've got numerous delusions in the mind. Martians don't come here very often. When they do come here, they don't bother with us. They go to Washington, D.C. <laughs> Number two, the person doesn't believe God's going to protect them. They have lack of trust in God. Everyone who has fears has lack of trust. If you had complete trust, there would be no fear. So at the altar, or at your house, or wherever you're ministering, easy. What's bothering you? It's not rocket science. How are you feeling? What's the problem? Why, why'd you come here? What do you need God to do for you? You need prayer for something? What are you doing there? You're tracking them. You're tracking them by listening to their answers. Right? Do you have to have uh, two or three doctor's degrees to do this? No, you can be a regular person and just look at common sense. This is how you track spirits. It's easy to do. But first, you got to track them in yourself. Okay. And you do it the same way. What's bothering you? 
Am I having negative emotions? Do I have obsessive thoughts? Am I taking offenses? Have I got a temper problem? You just audit yourself. How do you do that? You track it according to <laughs> the stamp. You've been sealed by the Holy Ghost. It's got nine numbers on it, stamped. Am I reacting that way? Am I saying that? Do I feel that? Track it. And you're there. You're right on top of them. And then you can get them out. Right? <laughs> Not right? Yeah. yeah. No, it doesn't work this way 100% of the time. For example, that gal sitting there, she was sitting down. Didn't I come over and grab you? Oh, it was a different gal. Were you uh, in the corner over there with Erica? Are you her sister? Oh, where's the others? Uh, she's at work. Her sister, your sister. Okay. Well, her, her sister is sitting down there. It doesn't work like this all the time. I take a look at her sister. And I go, wow, this gal needs to he be healed. So she wasn't coming up to see me, which is really weird. Most people <laughs> can't wait to see me. I go get her. I pulled her out of her seat. And I said, uh, she goes, that's my sister over there. I look over there, I see that gal. She's over in the corner. These are flying out of her like bottle rockets. A complete slaughter. The Holy Ghost jumped on that gal like there was no tomorrow. He was all over. I looked over and saw that. Is that your sister? She goes, yeah, it's my sister. I said, in your family tree, did you ever have any uh, spiritualism? And she goes, oh, gosh, my granddad was a shaman or something. What was he? Shaman? My granddad was a shaman. Oh, that did it. Now I'm, oh, my God, something's got to be done now. Because witchcraft's the worst thing in the world. That's the pits of humanity. So I went after the shamans. Were you there? Blow, blown out of her. So I said, why don't you do this kind of work? Erica's already doing it with that gal. So I carted the sister over there. Here, take this one. Sometimes it is witchcraft from the family tree. Yeah, you learn trial and error over the years. You learn to pick it up. You can see it. I can see she had witchcraft. Okay, but this, this is the best way to track them because it's normally something personal. What's bothering you? What's wrong with you? Why'd you come down here? And if you minister to three people, you know, one of them is not going to respond. They're either extremely stupid or they're extremely smart. And those two ranges don't do well with spiritual things because the really stupid people, the dumb people, can't grasp the basics, and the really smart people with high IQs overprocess spiritual things. They think too much about it. So you, this one's not going to work, but these two will probably give you some solid fruit. So pray a blessing over that one. Let them go. Go to this one. Just keep going. And then as you get better and your anointing goes up and your experience goes up, start doing twofers. 
twofers are great. So if the mother brought the son, you know you got a hook, right? Easy. So the son's jacked up, the mother brought the son. Why? They love him. Why, why else would they bring him? They're jacked up from the son. So now you're gonna go after a twofer. You're gonna go after the son first, then you're gonna get the mother. Get her for what? <clears throat> Carrying burdens, loving too much, codependency, being hurt and wounded by the son's behavior, chronic disappointments over the son's asinine life. You got her. So you get a twofer. You go start him up and then go get her. Now when they're coming out of her and him, you work them both. Then as you get more experience and more knowledge, you yell at a third one. Hey, come here. <laughs> see, and then you got a miniature revival going. You see that? Domino. It's easy to do once you get used to it, but you got to overcome your fears. Oh, you got fears? Oh, I just tracked something, didn't I? The opposite of peace, oh, is fear. Oh, where's that coming out? Out of you? Out of here. Who implanted that fear in you? Here. When did that happen? 2, 3, 4, 10, 12, 14. Track it back. Track it. Tracking. United States Post Office. Track it. Get them. So you had three people, you got two. You lost the third one. Don't even worry about that. Just let that go. Boom. Let it go. You go to the next one. How did, where'd you come up with that idea? Uh, Jesus said it, so pretty good source. <laughs> you go into this house and let your blessing put be on that house. What's a house? The, the demons see your body as a house. That's what it says. Uh, Matthew 12. You're a house. For, they want to live in your house. You go to this house. If they don't want it, well, take your blessing, your anointing, and go to the next house. That's what Jesus said. Don't stay all day there trying to convince bad ground. Oh, do it. You're going to wear yourself out. It's a trick of the devil. Move on to a win. Speaking of that, let's go to our handout. See the transitions? Yeah, uh, this is the most important thing to learn today. <sighs> I'm so tired of this. Uh, <laughs> this is a human being. They're made out of five parts, and each one of these parts works separately and together all at the same time. It's the miracle of humanity. Human beings are God's greatest creation because they're like him. And <clears throat> the insanity of Egypt, Persia, Nimrod, uh, Tower of Babel. God looks like an animal, a steer, a bull. A no, God looks like you. You are God's creator. That's all idolatry, right? Golden calf, all that crap. It doesn't exist. It's lies. This is what God looks like. He's got a head, two legs, two arms, hands, face. You're, you're his, he made you to look like him. That's how it works, right? And so this is how he built you, and it's fantastic. So he knew, he knew you needed a conscience to keep yourself out of trouble. He knew, knew you needed emotions. Every human being needs emotions. Emotions are good. It's only when demons man, manipulate them, they become bad. He needed a place for the Holy Ghost to live, your spirit man. If the Holy Spirit doesn't fill the house, Matthew 12, the demons will try to fill it. Witchcraft, voodoo, shamans, new age, whatever it is. They got something for everybody. Trust me, 100%. Right? 
And then the, the wheel on the boat is the mind. Where are we going? What are we doing? Are we stopping? Are we going? All controlled by you, not God, by you in your mind. If you want to marry another total loser, God's going to, ouch, that hurts because he knows you're going to get hurt. But he will allow you to do it. You want to go back in the sin and crank up the porn tonight? That's going to hurt his feelings. But he'll allow you to do it. God is not a control freak. They are. They want to control you and push you to obey them. They'll do anything to get you to do it. Anything, literally, to get you to do it. Anything. Any lie, any delusion, murder, anything. Nothing's off the table to them. Everything goes. Any kind of lie. Every kind of lie. They'll use good works. They'll use religious stuff. They'll use the Bible. Let the whole Bible memorized. I'll quote scripture to you. They don't care as long as you listen to them. Jesus wouldn't even listen to them, even when they told the truth. One demon was following Paul around, kept telling him, buddy, that he was fantastic. Hey, this guy represents the most high God, not just these other gods you guys are with. This is the most high God. Paul, this Paul's connected. Why were they doing that? <laughs> yeah. Paul's finally had enough of it. Come out. It came out. It wasn't the girl attacking him, it was the demon in the girl trying to bootleg her onto him. I'm acknowledging he is the most high, so I must be with him. See? It's like being at a club. I'm with her. <laughs> Anybody not following this? Because we're going to pray for your brain in about five minutes. <laughs> this is so simple, anybody can understand it. Okay? This is not Mensa. No, this is straightforward material, easy to understand, but hard to apply. Huh? So if somebody's overly emotional and they can't control their emotions, what's the problem with a person? They got soul problems. So you know it's emotional. You know it's coming out of the soul. What's the problem here? Temperance, no self-control. Wounds on the soul, damage in the soul, child abuse, something like that. Something pounded in there, right? So you know it's them. They're at it again. Probably from childhood. I woke up in the middle of the night. I had a dream. I'm supposed to go to Ethiopia. <laughs> Have you got any money or anything? No, I don't have any. Oh, God. Okay, getting delusions of grandeur. Get them out of there. You're not going to Ethiopia. Stupid. <clears throat> Well, the church will come at you. They'll hit you on that one. Well, Brother Mike, we knew a guy decades ago who went to help you. <laughs> Stop. One guy in a million doesn't make your asinine dream true. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> you know what it takes to go to Ethiopia? Man, you've got to have a network of support. You've got to have people praying for you. Do you have any of that? No, I don't. I just had a dream. <laughs> wow, dude, do us a favor and go back to drinking. Because you made more sense when you were drunk than when you were a Christian. You made sense at the bar. Let's party. That makes sense. You going to Ethiopia now as a Christian makes no sense. It's them. It's them. They're flipping it on you. Flipping. They're doing it. Oh, that doesn't happen. 
really? You haven't been sitting in my office with missionaries crying, talking to me. You weren't there. I was there. God told me to go. Oh, he did. What happened when you got there? Everything fell apart. <laughs> really? What happened to your support? It vanished. What about your church? Where was the money? That... Can you say set up? <clears throat> Listen, you can't win the world for Christ when your soul is damaged and your mind is not renewed. It doesn't work that way. See? Enthusiasm isn't your ministry. It's for a convention like she went to. Everybody that goes there is on high-octane enthusiasm. <laughs> you see that? It's like going to the football game. You feel and act different at the game than you do at home listening to your insane spouse and your crackpot kids. <laughs> Real life is different than a football game. That's a diversion. How'd that go? How'd that go? I, you're thinking about something. What is it? Like I mean? Yeah, you. No, I'm, I'm, I'm right with you. Oh, you are? Oh, yeah. good. I agree. I am. I, that's good. Yeah. I saw him collating back there, and I wonder what no, he was doing. I'm actually. No, it's good. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> Makes total sense. That's the first time I've heard that in eight years. Okay. This is how the personal spirit world works. Not the spirit world in the heavenlies. This is not a teaching about that. I'm just talking about nuts and bolts on the ground spirit world. That's all this is. Stuff that you and I will run into every day of our lives. This is what we see. Childhood, invasion of spirits, picking up spirits, being born again, crazy Christian life, weird sicknesses, no deliverance, dead. We see it every day. It's, it's all around us. This isn't a pie in the sky thing. This is what you need to minister personally. You can do it on one on one at home. You can do it down here at the altar. Do it wherever you can do it. Anywhere you do it, go do it. That's not my business. That's your business with God. I'm not trying to tell you how to live your life. I'm just trying to give you these basics so you can get out there and crank this thing and have a great reward in heaven when you get there. Again, that's got nothing to do with me. I'm just trying to give some basic information here so we can crank this thing. Okay, let's go to our handout, and we'll close with that, shall we? Now, I want you to keep this handout so that you know what it takes to become a... Hey, you got yours? Okay. Anybody not have one? I got run out of them? No. I'm sorry. No oh, crap. Now, if, if you want to know what qualified to be in the ministry, and this is you or someone else, okay? Because you'll always be running into people who are talking about getting into the ministry. Okay? First Timothy 3. They must not be a novice, okay? This is a, a major problem with young people who get saved. If you're born again here and you're a young person, your enthusiasm goes off the chart. And they're so excited about God, they actually get on people's nerves. But they tend to rush out to serve God quickly, and they don't have the knowledge or the wisdom on how to manage it. So it ends up in a catastrophe. The young person gets discouraged, and they quit. <clears throat> so Paul said, we don't want any novices because 
God will start blessing them. And then the devil will tell them they're a big deal. And they'll be filled with pride. And later on, they will fall into the crema, judgment of the devil. The devil will judge you. He judges you all the time. He's the accuser of the brethren. He will track you and listen to everything you say and everything you do. Oh, you just got saved and you're more enthusiastic than you've ever been. You love the Lord more than ever. What about your masturbation problem? Oh, okay. Not a novice. We can't take a novice and do this kind of work. Right, Connie? Yeah. No novices. We're in trouble. <laughs> Big trouble. Moreover, we must have a good reputation. You can't be some certified scumbag and start delivering people. Your rep will follow you. It will precede you. Right? You've got to have a track record of the gifts and fruit of the Spirit. Right? Otherwise, you will fall into a pegis. A pegis is a trap you did not see coming. You're just walking. You drop. Nope. The floor dropped out on you. You didn't see it. A pegis. That's what's going to happen if you're a novice and you don't have a good reputation. 2 Timothy chapter 2. A servant of the Lord must not strive. Servant, doulos. A doulos is a slave. A slave. If you're working with someone who wants to be the cock of the walk and wants to be noticed and wants to be the boss of everything, we're in trouble here. Okay? I have a couple of times on a temporary basis have had alpha females on the ministry team. And I took a pretty good beating both times. They were here temporarily, and then I got, finally, God moved them out. <laughs> Why? They're not slaves. A slave is a servant. A slave is someone who doesn't mind if you talk down to me. A slave lets stuff... Well, can I help you? Not can I dominate you? Can I help you? See, that's a slave. Right? They tell me to go here, I go here. Tell me to go there, I go there. That's you. That's you. You're a doulos. Of who? Other people? No, you're a servant of the Lord. You're a slave of Christ. And you must not, Makamai, start fights and arguments all the time. Fighting over the rapture. I did a Bible study. And I did it on the rapture. And I said, I'm not sure when the rapture is going to hit. It could be pre-trip. could be mid-trip. could be post-trip. I said... But based on my research, it kind of looks like pre-trib to me. Oh, boy. Oh, oh. yeah. You want, to, you want a little tidbit on how to wipe your ministry out overnight? Just follow my example. That didn't go over well. But I have never, Makamai, argued with people over the when the rapture is going to hit, or the tribulation, or whether the Pope's the Antichrist, I, I steer clear out of all of that stuff because, <laughs> because it starts a fight. And then nobody wants to learn anymore. They just want to dig in like an Alabama tick and support their own positions on stuff that's not going to do anybody any good. Who gives a rat's fanny when the rapture is? I don't have any control over it. And I'm not going to get a heads up before it hits. <laughs> Jehovah, go tell Mike. I'm not getting the message. <laughs> Stupid. Stop fighting over religious crap. It's satanic. I'm filling in what Paul's saying here. I'm adding something to it. <laughs> Stop doing that. But you got to be gentle to people. Epius, you must be an affable person. You have to be a kind of person that people look at you and go, I think I could talk to that person. 
you know. You don't want to be kind of a loud mouth, grumpy, married uh, minister. You must be apt to teach. What does that mean? You have to have some kind of capacity to say something and relate it to somebody who can understand it. Okay. You got to be affable, friendly, approachable. You must be teachable. You got to be what? Patient. Aniakatos is a Greek word that means you got to be able to put up with some crap. Okay. When you sit and listen to somebody, you're going to be patient with them and they're going to tell you just a bunch of bad things. This ain't working, that's not working, nobody likes me, everything's bad, I'm sick, car wreck, my child's in the hospital. You're going to, you have to be able to absorb crappy stuff from people and not let it affect okay? you. Have to, you're doing that because you're, you love them and you're not going to get down because they're down. Because you're going to try and help them and you can't help them if you're down. If they don't have any faith, you've got to have the faith. If, you, if, they, if they're confused, you've got to be on the money. And you can't do that if you're living out of your soul, getting upset, taking offenses, and criticizing people. That's not going to work. If that's your personality, please do not get into the ministry. You're going to hurt people. And your goal is to help them. That's what you want to do. You want to help people. Right, Jen? <laughs> you got to be patient, meekness, humble. Gee, nobody wants to get prayer from somebody who's a you know, a horse's patoot. Nobody likes to be bossed around or muscled around or stepped on, right? I mean, you get used to it when you're married, but I'm talking about ministry here, you. You've got to be approachable. You've got to paideo, you've got to be able to discipline people to the point where they'll accept it, okay? You got to modify your personality, you know? Right? Everybody's like this. When you fell out of the womb, you had a personality at birth. You were born with a personality. Ask any mother, they'll tell you that this kid, that kid, this kid, that kid, all when they were infants, all had different personalities. They could spot them in a second. But as you grow older and you begin to relate to your environment, you develop a personality temperament. And that temperament is, is determined by your personality, how you were raised, your parents' personalities, grade school, how you were treated. So that as you're sitting here today, each person here has a different personality temperament. So if I went to your temperament, you would be able to absorb from me verbal abuse at a certain level. You would absorb it at a different level. Yours would be different. Each personality temperament and how they relate to humanity and their environment is different. <laughs> See? So as a, Paul's saying here, as a slave, you have to be able to adjust. So, you know, you can talk sternly to some per temperaments. You have to be gentle, gentle and loving too. Are you okay? Stop that, son. Are you all right? You got to be able to be like almost like a chameleon and manage different personality tempers, almost like you're surfing or almost like you're in a fishing boat. You got to kind of go with the flow with people. You can't just be rigid. Here's how we do it. P people are, aren't like that. You got to mix and match. Right? Yeah. And so as you grow up, your personality temper temperament also includes 
your inherent biases. So if, I'm, if I grow up in a family that hates black people, my, I have a built-in bias in my soul of negativity toward blacks. I wasn't born with it, but it was absorbed in me because I was raised in this environment, okay? In this environment, they may not like Asians. This environment, they may not like animals. Whatever it is, doesn't matter. I mean, there's a million different environments, trillions of them, or how you were raised. But anyway, all this bias is built in to you as a person. And so if you're going to be a minister of the gospel, you cannot minister to people out of your bias. See, you have to approach everybody as a clean slate. That's a human being loved by God, not a black, a white, an Indian, a, doesn't matter. Whew. You are loved by God. That's how, I, that's how I go. That person is worth a fortune to God. That's how I take her. See, real value. See that? I can't let any personal bias affect me, right? So I was raised in a heterosexual environment, so I had a bias against gays. Okay? I, I was not involved in homosexuality. I didn't like it. I was around people who thought it was weird. What are you doing? Gross. Okay? Right? But when I hit here, I had to remove that bias and see gay as God's love. You're gay. See, I separate the behavior from the person. I have to remove my bias that I was raised with to help that person. So if you're raised in a family, your personality got used to your dad beating your mom. Okay, so after the Holy Spirit comes in, you got to remove that bias that women are doormats, second level, second tier, low. No, that's not. Every human being equal in Father's eyes. So if you don't know what your biases are, you're going to have problems administering to people because you've got to be able to recognize it and remove it. You can't have a bias. Okay. So when I had my prison ministry, I was raised in my family. Nobody was in jail. Nobody was committing crimes in my family. My parents were drunks, not criminals. So I had to remove any bias I had for criminals when I had my prison ministry. So I would go around to prisons all over the state and I saw the convict, not as a convict, but as a love object of father. So the bias has to be removed. See that? Everybody has biases. You can't help it, you're raised that way. Everybody has them. The question is, are you controlling them? Do you recognize them and can you control them? Back in the 50s and 40s, everybody was raised in uh, one race families. Whites married whites, blacks, blacks, Asians, blah, blah, blah. Now, it's all mixed up. Everybody mix, marries nothing. There's no. Well, you, if you have that bias, if you were raised in white, 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 black, 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 you got to get rid of that because in the marriage counseling, I got black, I got a white, I got an Asian, I got a Hispanic. It doesn't matter. Remove it. God loves these two. Period. Oh, I'm a bad person. I have a bias. No, you're not. You're a normal human. Everybody is raised with bi a bias on several subjects. You got to recognize it and stop it from 
blocking your blessings to others. That's all it is. That's all Paul's saying here. Paul. Okay, and then you've got to uh, uh, recognize that these people who will not receive your training, 2 Timothy 2, I do all, they won't receive discipline, they won't retreat, receive your training, uh, you've got to let them go. Flip down to 1 Corinthians 5. Some guy is uh, sleeping with his stepmom. Paul says, are you nuts? Get that guy out of there. That, those lust demons are going to spread all through the church. You don't just leave somebody in, in there and let them keep doing that. Same thing with everything else. You got a pedophile over here. You got a, whatever it is. If, if they're sinning and they won't repent, they won't change, get them out of there. They did. They listened to him. They kicked the guy out of church. Remember that? 1 Corinthians 1. But he repented. 1 Corinthians 2. He wanted to come back. And they were hard on him. No, no, no. No, we don't do that. If somebody screws up and they repent, we take them back, period. We give them another chance. God gave them another chance, so we'll give them one. Paul says, listen, don't, don't uh, throw that guy out anymore. He repented. Forgive him. If you don't, he's going to be overcome with sorrow. You know, and then and you've got all kinds of problems when that happens. So if somebody screws up and they repent, I take them back. If they keep telling me to go screw myself, uh, go somewhere else and send me a letter. Don't come back here. It's that simple. Because you don't want that stuff spreading. Bad attitudes, negative attitudes, criticism, griping, all spreads like a cancer in the group. Any pastor will tell you that. Any pastor will tell you that. And it says here, if God peradventure will give them repentance to acknowledging the truth. This statement is shocking. I'll close with this. It doesn't happen to some people. So if it doesn't happen, let them go. Just release them. It's caused by rebellion demons. Okay, these demons get into kids when they're young. Because they have, they're being abused, mistreated, or neglected, and there's, they have a sense of injustice. I should be treated better. This is wrong. My neighborhood, my buddy gets treated better. The kids at school are better. I'm getting screwed. Everybody's dumping on me. They're getting be benefits. I'm not getting any. And the rebellion demon comes in and says, hey, listen, you're getting screwed, man. You're getting screwed. That ain't right. Something needs to be done with these people. That's wrong. Antifa. Antifa. Literally. Millions of rebellion demons. They have had enough. They're going nuts. Okay. If the person has these rebellion demons, it says if. Okay, so something's going on that you're not aware of and they don't repent. Some people are not going to repent or can't repent. Move, move on. If they do repent, they have to recover themselves out of the snare. Peggy's again. A trap you didn't see coming. Boop, you drop. Of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Thelema is the devil takes you captive and you do what he says. And he's talking about Christians. If you ever needed verses to convince somebody that Christians can be infected but not possessed by demons, you now have it. These are the two verses you need to have. Can a Christian be infected with a spirit? Yes, they can. It's right here. The demons get into the body, causing an addiction, taking the person captive to the addiction. They can't stop drinking. They can't stop using 
right? They get into the mind, schizophrenia. They can't stop thinking. They can't stop talking. They can't stop listening to voices. See that? They're infected. They can't get any better. They can't get any better. The seminar next Friday, I'll lay it right out. Autonomic processing. They cannot get any better. The devil can take Christians captive. It says it right there. Right? That's powerful. All right, last question, and let's close then. Do you have any symptoms that you need to get rid of today of spirits? <laughs> All right, well, dear Lord, uh, thank you for sending all my friends out today. But the most important thing is there's some people here that you want to help and touch. And uh, I want to help you facilitate that. I want to be a slave and work with you and do what you want done. And I know what you want done is love, healing, and deliverance. That's what you want. I know that's what you want. I know your personality and temperament, Lord. I know it's love. I know it's the fruit of the Spirit. I know it's the gifts of the Spirit. I know it's unconditional love and mercy. I know that. That's your personality temperament. And it's perfect. Thank you for that, dear Lord. And the Holy Spirit's here today to, to heal and deliver. No question. And we yield the floor to him. We roll out the red carpet for him. He's the ultimate boss. And I'm happy to submit to him. It's a privilege and honor to submit to him. And I'm telling you that from this moment on forward, this is your business right now, sweet Holy Spirit. This is you. You're the boss. And whoever needs help, is going to come down here for prayer, and you're going to help them. I certainly can't help them. I can't heal anybody. I can't help anybody. But I know who can. And that is the precious blood of Jesus. That is the broken body of Christ. That is the cross of Calvary. And sweet Holy Spirit, you've got all of that right in the palm of your hands. Thank you. Amen. You are dismissed unless you need prayer. Come down to the front. Thank you for coming today. I hope nobody's mad at me. Hi, sweetheart. I to get prayer. I feel like, um, so I'm on Julie's calls, and I, I pray for people, or I'm trying to pray for people as well, but I feel like something's blocking. When what I'm was the last one? Passed out. What was the last one you did? Um, on Tuesday nights, so I'm. You made a call. No, I'm trying to oh. cast things out. On the oh, you're talking about yourself. Yeah. Oh, you're not talking about you calling people. No. Oh, no, I'm no, sorry. I'm, I'm just, I'm just trying to help oh. cast things out, but I feel like. Oh, I have with a her. Block you're trying to help her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So I feel like something's sort of blocking things. Oh, um, do you know what I, it is? Um, no. So when Stephanie's doing like uh, casting now, I, hey, I so can. Can you say that again? So say that again. I'm on the calls with Julie, right. and I feel like um, when Stephanie's doing the cast outs, I can actually look at the people on the call, and I actually see things like I'm looking at one person, and I saw loneliness, and I'm putting it in the chat oh, for good. Stephanie. Mm -hmm. um, but then when it's good. my turn, I don't know if it's fear, I don't know what it is, but I. Yeah. I like lose whatever it is I'm trying to say. Now you're, you're trying to say you, you have a low self confidence. Okay. Correct. I, it's something just you're blocking it. it. I don't. I, but, but I you're, know I'm worth it. I know God's calling me to do what I need to do. I'm not afraid to do it. I just lose whatever is in my head. So it's watch. not an emotional issue. It's a mental one. Is that what you're Perhaps saying? It's mental. 
Okay, it's, so I, the last one you had was, <laughs> Stephanie was on the Zoom. Mm -hmm. The last one you were doing that, do you recall that one? Um, yeah, I just, I, I don't know if I just got nervous, but I just... Okay, what was the guy talking about? What was... The call. What was he talking about on the call? You started getting nervous. On the call? Yeah. Um, I actually went first. Julie did a couple of, like, casting out. She was like, we started, I think, with witchcraft. And then right after that, I just was like, okay, um, insecure security or a couple other things just come out and then my mind just went blank. Even looking at the faces, I just had nothing. It just was like gone. And then Stephanie came on and it's amazing. I was looking at people and I could Then it kicked back in and you yeah, saw everything. And then I was like putting things in the chat for her to say. And, and that, that pattern there, is that happen in any other area of your life? Um, at home, at work, actually, which all one? All the time, at home. All the time. But yeah, I don't work. So I'm my main, I'm a caregiver for my son. And the last time it happened at home was? When my husband was like asking me to do things. What do you say? Um, he'll, he'll give me like list of things to do and then he'll come back and say, did you do this? And I'm like, I don't know. And, and then I have to like stop and try to recall, am I, did I do it or didn't I do it? I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. So, okay. Now that sounds like a fear demon hiding your oh. brain. Oh, okay. Okay. Doesn't it? Is there anxiety when you get that it list? It does make me anxious about the list of things yeah. that he's getting anxious, to do Anxious yeah. over not doing it or not doing it well enough? Well, I feel like he's putting me on the spot when he's like, recalls the list and I'm like, I don't know, did I get it done? Did it, let me go check my calendar or like, I have it written down because I'm afraid I'll forget who I am. I'm afraid. Did you hear that? <laughs> That's it. Thank and you, when you were little, okay. did either your parents treat you like that and put you My on the spot? My dad always put me on the your spot. Your dad? Yes. And what was his name? Phil. Phil. Yeah. Oh. There we go. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you just track, you track that thing perfectly right back to Phil. <laughs> Phil is still haunting his daughter. Anxiety, fear, fear of failure, fear of making a mistake, fear of something from her dad. Phil, Phil, her husband triggers her dad when he gives her that list and then he follows up to see if she did it and followed instructions and did it right. Uh, and Phil manifested. There he is. Here he comes. Come on out. Father God, you're her father now, not Phil. Come on out. Come out of there. Hurry up. Come out next. Anybody else need prayer? Come out right now. Come out, everybody. There you go. Good girl. Go right now. You need something? Yeah. What happened? I've been working on the miracle list, the fortress. Oh, yeah. Fortress in here? Yep. Okay. And how to get built? What happened? What happened? What? How to get built up in there? What happened when you were younger? Rejection. Rejection from. Maybe I was born as a target. Maybe. But maybe since I was six. Who, 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 who abused you when you were six? Nobody abused me. I was just a target. A target of? What's that? Target from? Who was targeting? Just a target. Who I did born, it? I was born a target. And then what they do to you as a target? Nothing in particular. But uh, I was falsely accused when I was six of, of uh, bad language. Who did? Kids and the oh, kids when you being in school? Yeah. Is it okay? Then the principal broke the paddle on me, and then uh, then my dad had uh, made a police report on me and my sister. Told him that I sliced her neck. 
and it was an accident when we were fighting over the phone. But my dad believed it and put a report on me when I was 12. And it, and it just, and that, on that continued. There. Yeah. That pattern continued to this day. Or it, now I, I've been, I stopped getting arrested a couple of years ago. Okay. Yeah, but I was a target since I was like yeah. six. Yeah, I know what it is. Close your eyes. Just take a big breath and relax. And these, there we these go. things been twitching. No, they're coming out now. They're, they're coming been twitching all week. They're going to come out. They're coming out. They're going to twitch out now. Father Lucifer. The destroyer targeted him when he was six years old. He is the accuser of the brethren. And he made sure that he took the heat for everything. The devil turned him into a doormat and a sponge for criticism and negativity and lies. Everybody lied about it. They made up stories. They exaggerated lies to him. Even at school, they turned on him. And it was all these demons right there. It's them. And tonight, they are going to come out in the name of Jesus. And he's going to forgive every person that ever lied about him, stabbed him in the back. <laughs> said negative things about him. We are going to forgive every single one of them, in particular his dad. Every one of them are to be forgiven tonight. Every one. And they are to come out in the name of Jesus. Come out of his lungs right now, you false accuser of the brethren. Stop lying about him and come out right now. Take a breath and blow. They're getting ready to come out. Come out of there, devil. Come out of there. Keep breathing. Breathe. Blow. Come out, devil. Come out of his lungs. You heard him. You're trespassing. Yeah, come out of there right now. Come out. Spirit of fear from childhood. Age six, go. Spirit, come out. Age six, go. Come on. Spirit of death is falling. Get out of my body right now in the name of Jesus. I want my dad gone. I'm releasing my dad to the Lord and I'm letting him go. I let him go. Right now, come out. All my dad's demons, come out of there. Tattoo demons, come off my body right now. Tattoo spirits, come off my body right now. Criticism. Yes, go. Go. Come out of there. Get out of my body right now. Come out of my throat. Come out of my throat, I said. Come out of there. Hatred and anger. Hatred and anger. I'm out. Bitterness. I'm out. Come, out. My Come out right now. Come out. Come out of my body right now. There, there he is. Come out of my body right now. Come on out. Come up. Come out. Hate. Go. Anger. Discouragement. Fear of rejection is gone. Fear of rejection. Come out right now. Easy to cross out. Yes, it is. Come out right now. Get out of my body right this second. Just use your mind and scream at him. Get out now! Get out of my head! Come out of my throat. Right now, quickly. Come out. Yes, come out right now. Good seeing you today. I'm really enjoying this. It's nice. You know, well, looking forward to getting to know you and talking to you. Good. Well, just put it in the back of your mind here. Oh, no, I'm ready to meet you. No, not that. Down the road. 
Are you getting deliverance? I got no. Jesus on my side. You I do it. An angel on my well, I have a story. You, you do it. Yeah. Sin Here, I, I can do it now. Here. I can do, I, I, do, let me tell you what. I feel very connected to you. <laughs> and I appreciate that. You know, I, I really humbly mean that. Look. When I'm here, I submit to your authority. Unfairness. You know, I just want you to know that. You know, well, I mean, I've, been, I've been around a long time, and, and I just want you to know that I really respect what you're doing. You're right on. I, you're blowing me away. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't sleep last night. Well, I was so excited that I met you. I just, I, I really, I, 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 I think you make a good deliverance person. Killing kill down the road. I really do. Just think about it. I'm not telling you what to do. Just something to think about. I, uh, I've been doing ministry off and on for a while. It's not fair. You know, it makes it hard when you. I got blindsided like the Korean thing. That, 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 I couldn't see that coming. So. <laughs> well, it's all a setup. I just went over it. I, I, it's all a setup. The reason I asked you about the body is because I don't use all those parts. You have, you have more parts than I use. I got body, soul, spirit. You're using mind and conscience. Mind and conscience. And I'm staring at that and you're like, what are you thinking about? I'm going, mind and conscience. Restless. I, I read the half of the stuff all the time. It's more. The figures. <laughs> I have a, I have a uh, master's in theology, a doctor in ministry, PhD in philosophy and theology. Oh, really? Wow. Uh, and I love the Lord. I love the Lord very much. I see that. Yeah. You know, and I, 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 can, I, I can see the mantle of the priest on it. I, can, I, I sense the mantle of the priest, the, the authority God gives you, you know. Well, have you been tracking yourself? In what way? That way. Yeah, I think that. I think I struggle with those once in a while. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I can see. How they get in there? Well, probably, probably from uh, poor father generational curses, or you know, growing up dysfunctional. Who knows? Uh, well, now who, who knows? Yeah, I, I don't, I don't You're know. Good. You got to figure it out now. Yeah, Come yeah. on now. You got to know so we can track them and get them out. Yeah. Paranoia. I find your power. No, I, hey, you can pray for me for deliverance anytime. I'm not, no, no, I, I'm not against that. But I, I know you're not. I'm, sens I'm sensing it's probably a seven day, ten fast. So probably a good long seven day fast. Well, now, before you do that, though, we got to kind of audit this. What needs to be removed? Right. Self accusation. So if I had a magic wand, I don't, but if I did and waved it over you, what would you want removed? What what do you want out of I'm not always gentle. Go. Okay. What else? <laughs> Fantasy lust. I've been diagnosed over the years with uh, experiencing symptoms of ADD. Yeah. So that and maybe jumping is what I'm looking at. Right. Okay. So I, I, I do struggle with matter, matter of fact, I've taken a couple of tests and I'm, it shows I'm, the test shows that I, and I've been treated for ADD okay. in the past, but it shows I'm like possibly close to the spectrum on the Asperger's. Okay, so you're over here, right? Okay, so this is a brain case. I'm sorry? Brain case. I'm a brain case? Yeah. So they're not in the brain. So they're in your brain. So in my brain. It's in my brain. Yeah. Then how did they get in there? How did they get in there? Who, who had that? I, I was molested as a child. Uh, what age? Seven, eight. Seven or eight, and who did it? Boy Scout leader. Boy Scout, okay. Yeah. Back to the Mormons. Okay. Um, and was it fondly? Yeah. I, yeah or it was it oral? Both. Okay, on him? He made you do it or no, he did it to you? Me. Uh, both? Yeah, they made they did it to me. Oh, they, they yeah, who two more than one two guys in different times yeah okay good and uh and uh, my dad was an alcoholic very dysfunctional oh your dad yeah uh oh was he was he smart too uh, or was your mother smart i don't know if they were or not but it was very dysfunctional what kind of career did he have 
he worked for he he was at administration for Steel Mill. He's, and your mom? My mom raised the kids. Homemaker. Yeah. So, okay. I, my dad's pretty smart. Was your granddad real smart? I don't know. My my Grandma? dad's dad died. He was thirteen. Grandma. No, I don't I don't know if any of them. Okay. Let's well, skip that then. Let's go with. I, I didn't have a relationship with my with my mom. It was very hard. I thought they were hard. Hard in what way? Just just dysfunctional. Crazy. How? Just intense. Screaming. Yelling. Oh, a lot of fighting. Oh, okay. Now we're getting better. Uh, seven so, kids in the family. Seven kids. Yeah. So, Catholic family. Was there a lot of uh, of uh, competition in the family? Yeah. I got involved in I got involved in drugs. At what age was that? Uh, junior high. A couple times in the middle. Pot. Yeah, pot. A little coke. Okay. All right. Now, what are what did we just outline there? Right. There's no hit. Entry points. Step mechanisms. Entry points. Entry points. <laughs> You're not getting. How many times were you molested? Last year, not with tons. Several. Mm -hmm. Several. Two or three, or ten yeah. or twelve. Uh, maybe ten or twelve. Okay. But, but what it did is it led into a, a life of self. Pleasure. Yeah. The, what actually happened was he left this guy and went in there. And this one left this guy, the other guy went in there. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you I made a developed mistake. lust from no, you made a mistake. from from them. Yes. Transfer in. Now you're lusty. But, it, but it's not like porn. It's just self pleasure. Yeah. Well, it's lust. Really no porn, nothing like that. It's just self pleasure. No, it's all lust though. Um, yeah, yeah. Porn, self pleasure. Uh, Eating too much food, drugs, alcohol. L the body is lusting after something. Right. You with me? Yeah. And it came from these two perverts. It wasn't your fault. No, I never believed it was. No, I didn't struggle with that. They did it. This thing transferred in. See that? And the AD&D probably came from that. And I was a slow learner until I became an adult, and then I had to catch up. And I, I've gone to school almost twenty something years now. Mm -hmm. You know, I had, I had to catch up as an adult. Mm -hmm. I wasn't a good student as a kid. And your AD and D was diagnosed what age? Um, mid adult life. Mid adult. But the symptoms started when? Seven eight. <laughs> Absolutely. You found it. You tracked it. And, and, and I, had, I knew I had. A, I, yeah. I remember them talking to me back in the first grade before this happened. I had a high I remember. I remember them talking to me, going, "There was nothing you could do. What do you do with me?" You know, my parents had no system to teach me outside of a public school. You know, so I, know I had a high IQ. Yeah, of course you did. But it's untrained. Yeah. Well, they're blocking. Yeah. Come out of there, help it out now. Yeah, you just tracked it. That's what I said over there. Are you tracking it? And I just okay. those have to come out. Let's do it. They have to do it. Ego. You have to. Okay. Frustration. Uh, I trust you already enough that, that I, I want this out. These, these, these demons here that this these perverts gave you, they they won't come out unless you hate them and attack them. And it's hard to do. Lust demons are tricky because Satan sends lust demons to people as a benefit. <laughs> So they get a bunch of stress here, then they lust. They get stress over here, then they lust, because lust is a relief. It's like a vacation. Huh? Escape mechanism. Yes, yeah, escape mechanism. That's why they're hard to get out. So I got to get the person, any person, to hate them. Uh, how do I learn? Viciously. You, you got to ask God to give you the gift of hate. I don't hate anybody. No, I'm not talking about anybody. I'm talking about these demons that ruined your life. Yeah. You got to hate them. Not a people. I remember them. being an innocent young boy. I remember that time. You were innocent. They they did it. You didn't do it. Yeah, that's step one. Will you do that? Yeah. Hey. All right. That I don't know how to do. Then, huh? I've done deliverances. I I've, I've taught, but I don't know how to teach how to hate the demon. No, you got to go to God. 
God and ask God to give you the gift of hate. The hate, the hate, the sin that came on. The, the demons and the sin, the hate. So I, I say, Lord, teach me how to hate the you know, sin that's entered. Well, it's a person that entered you. Yeah, but they got names. There are persons in there. That's right. They, they he ga these perverts gave them to you. Okay, good. You follow that? Uh, uh, 100%. Yeah. You, um, I'm, all, all of this I'm, stuff. Not, I'm not against anything you're talking about. I, I'm totally open. No, you're, you'll, you'll pick this stuff up like that. But uh, getting this hate to come out of here, that's what we need. And lust demons are hard to hate because they're so beneficial. Well, yeah, yeah. They help you. They're sent by the devil to help you. Yeah, you, you enjoy the orgasm. So why would you want? Why would you want to hate it? Or all, or anything, pizza, whatever it is that the person has in so I pleasure hate, from. I want to hate gluttony. I want to hate. You hate the demon. Of gluttony, hate the person. Demon of addiction, right? right. Demon of lust. That's that's what they gave you. They gave you them. It's a person. You know, all my life, I've tried to get rid of this, and I never knew how. Well, that's because they 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 tricked you. Right. They didn't. You didn't I, I see like, it. As, I like the drawing of the demon too. That's you didn't see it as a person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a person. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a person. She's a person. And, then, and, that, and, demon, and he's a person. He has an identity. Uh, totally. He's a, he thinks, he talks, he, ha he wants you finished. He hates your guts. He hates you. Now you turn it around and give it back to him. I've never followed anything on that I could read. Yeah. Jesus said, you cannot serve two masters. You must hate one of them. Oh, you're not I know hating them, yeah. and that's normal. So you got to hate the one and love the other. Correct. Yeah. Well, you're you're not hating them. You're just tolerating them. Tolerating them is not hating. Them. It's almost like I don't like you, but I'm not going to do anything yeah, about it. It's almost okay? like like having a relative that so stayed long, too long. Been so long. Right. 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 Yeah. Bingo. Yeah. It's been so long. I'm used to it. You're right. Sad. And what you just said applies to all everybody. So. When you're in your deliverance ministry here, uh, you will be doing what I, you just said on others. You're awesome. You're going to do it. I got a hug for this. I really appreciate you. You're I'm looking forward to getting Listen, I got your email. You're doing it. I got your email. I love you. I'm, not, I'm free okay. up for next Friday. Okay. I start, I teach at Great Hearts. Yeah. Oh, teacher. you do? Oh, okay. So I, I go back to school next Friday. So you're off on weekends? I'm off on weekends. I'm, 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 okay. up, I'm, up, I'm up now till next Friday and okay. weekends and nights. Okay. So I'll fix it. Yeah, we'll love you. So I emailed you. Okay. I'll wait for you. Okay. Thank you. Sir. Thanks for coming today. No, no. I, 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 Say hi to your wife. She's exhausted on the couch. Uh, great. I couldn't get her. She was too, too exhausted. But she, but That's normal. Yeah. Now, she had a lot come out of her. Thank you. Sir. What are you up to? I have trouble. Uh, what trouble? Well, I was thinking that because I'm in a neighborhood with a lot of witches, that I would get that. But what's the trouble in your body? What happened to you? Oh. Well, they're trouble, but they're outside. What's in here that's trouble? Uh, all the little things that were hanging around that are sickness all decided to be big right now. What's, what's the biggest one? Um, my the varicose veins are every oh, trying to crawl up everywhere. They were small for about ten years, and now they just exploded all over. Okay, now that sounds like a spirit of infirmity that got in years ago. And so what they do, they just whittle a person down like a fish, and they're whittling her down, and they want to kill her, whittling her down. And they got in her because of a bunch of other demons, because she used to have the ability to hate years ago, not now, back in the day. She used to hate. Not everybody has that ability. Not everybody has the ability to hate. Yeah, not everybody actually can do it and has done it. 
And she's been there. She hated. I gave him to be head over all things to the church. Remember? Maybe when I got saved, I said to the Lord, oh, I hate what you hate. You hate the devil, and I, want to, I would like to work with you. And so that was my first speaking about it, but I didn't know I was wearing it. I didn't know I was in the slip of it. Really? I didn't know. Have you ever hated a guy? I didn't know I hated the boy. I had. I didn't know it until you pointed it out. Then it came to me. Did you, did you hate him? I didn't know that was well. I didn't know. I never said. Do you now? I now I know what it is. So you did hate him. You just didn't know it. The demons disguised it. They disguised the word. They told you that you didn't hate him. Oh. But now, you later on, you saw you did hate him. Did your behavior reflect hate? Come out right now. Carnal knowledge. I don't know, because he's just trying to get on me real bad right now. Does your behavior reflect, look like hate well, when I, when I, toward him? When I, when I got in a situation of killing him, when the police left, I thought I, I, I was angry, and I said, no, I can't wish he would die. And then all of a sudden he came in, no, you don't want him to die. And I said, okay, I don't want him to die. I'm sorry, I don't want him to die. And I prayed for him to live, not knowing what I was acting Actually, really. Yeah, well, you still don't know. The varicose vein demon is in there. He wanted him to die. That's why you said that. We command you to spread out, and then you realize, wait a minute, I don't want him to die. Cut your cords of communication. That was him. He wanted that guy dead, didn't he? He hated him. Out. We don't want you manifesting. Just come out. Get off his head. Get off his mind. Get out of that brain. So I said all that to say this. When somebody actually learns and experiences hate, that's a door opener. Plop. All kinds of crap plop in there. And then later on, they draw in other demons. New age, witchcraft, um, low self-esteem, self-hatred, depression, clinical depression. They just keep pulling stuff in. Okay. But the trigger was, I, I hate your guts. Right? All right. Well, she hates some, so she knows. Okay. All right. Lord, I want you to go back right now in time to that day when she said, I hate him. And then she caught herself. You remember that day, Lord? Remember that day? I'm out. That varicose vein demon is trying to chop her down. Get out. Get out. And today he's going to leave. Go. Today he's going to leave. You're going to come out of them legs today. You're going to come out of them legs today. Come out of them legs today. Come out of them legs today. Come out. She wants to be free of the demon of hate. Come out. Every demon from him come out of there. Yes, sir. Worry. Worry. Come out of there right now, quickly. Come on. Hold that. Yeah, hold it. Here it comes. You come out of there right now. You spirit of hate, I want you out of there. Hate. Leave her right now. Leave her hate. Leave her. Hey, come on. There it is. You spirit of infirmity, come out of them. Legs. Legs. Come out of there right now, quickly. Come out of there. Come out of there and go. Come out of there, quickly. Come out. You get out of that body right this second. Come out of that body right now, go. You get out of that body, go. Come out of there, you devil. 
Come out. Amen. Come out, hate. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Thank you, brother. I love you. My wife and I. Was that your wife? We need prayer. Oh. I'll get a moment. <clears throat> Hi. Who's my wife, Christine? What's your name? Christine. Christine. Oh, okay. Come on up here. I want to talk to you for a minute. Okay, now what's bothering you? Yeah, I saw you sitting back there. That's the problem. Ever since you sent him the email, and he's been going through everything here, as it says, things are going to get worse. Things got really worse. In what way? Well, I feel like his familiar spirit finally jumped on me. Because my problem is I respond. I don't respond godly. Let me go. For example, I'll yell and I'll say things. For example, what happens? Okay, so just recently in the last two months since we got that, that list, I'll say things you know, that are truthful but out of hate and anger. You know, and so I get to say, I'm going to divorce you, I'm going to go. I'll say, after all the abuse, after all they put me through, after all the times they hurt me, after all the rest, I'm still here in the crowd, and I just started saying stuff like that. Yeah. Right yeah. And I had stopped for the life of the last two months. Yeah, no, see, that's coming out here. Yeah. Oh, Feel I that. I know. Yeah. And I can't, I cannot get my tongue to shut up, and we have our son. And I'm like, Lord, just do whatever. I don't care if it's losing my voice, my tongue. Like, do whatever you have to do. Because it's pathetic. Like, I've never been to this point where I can't do that. But it's always, I always say, I'm responding to you. Like, if you're loving, and it doesn't justify, I know that, but I'm like, if you're being loving to me, I'm not going to respond to you. So his, his demons have been with him since birth. I don't have yeah, but and so, so I been with them for my years. I left them for three solid years, and we got back with each other. And they're still there. And I and I always done really well. And I know that's why the Lord brought me here. Done. But recently, I really took on, I took on some of his for sure because I yeah. didn't start. Now, now what's happening here is that the spirits in there are working with the spirits in him and your son. So it's a it's a trifle. And that's why I'm like, and so, am I going to get delivered if they're not fully delivered? No, you're not. keeps coming back, me and my son. No, that's not it. No. The demons in your son and your husband are using them like puppets to get to you. Because they, so, they don't, no, the demons are much older than that. Okay. The, the demons in your son and in your husband. I'm not talking about your husband. They're triggering you. Yeah. I feel like I can't take it no more. Like I'm at that last. I know. That's why they're doing it. Now, they're poking your soul. Oh, oh, oh. And they're trying to get you to have a nervous breakdown and a collapse. And they're getting pretty close to it. <laughs> well, this is the worst I've ever been mentally, spiritually, because of yeah. the my depression before I met him. So I've always been real strong and grounded. Mm -hmm. And even with what I'm going through right now, like before the thought even, even comes, because I can feel it in my soul, I'm already rejecting it. But I'm feeling those things I've never, it's been years, years, years. Mm -hmm. I know I'm, I know. We need to be delivered. We can't go any further. We have a community. We have people that follow us. We're leaders, and I feel like we're lying. I feel like it's faith at this point because it's, I know. No, no. Uh, listen, I, I know you're all stressed out here. You're, you're talking a mile a minute, right? Well, because I'm not. Because you're you're scared. You've got anxiety. Well, the last time we left from the other one, it was really bad. Yes. Now, for like two hours, I felt like we're yeah. held captive in the car. Yeah, yeah I know. It's really scary. I know. Yeah. Now, we got to take it one step at a time. Okay. And close your eyes and just relax. For, take a breath and relax, okay? And a girl. Close your eyes. All right. Lord, she is carrying burdens that I can't even believe. The devil is piling on her. 
He's dumping on her. He backed a dump truck on her, and he's trying to get her to collapse, and it's working. So today we're going to ask you for a supernatural miracle to release her son out of her soul and give him to you. Let your tears go. a girl. Good girl. I'm going to let my husband go. There it is. I'm going to let him go now. Let him go. Come out. Every demon from my son, come out of me right now. Every spirit from my marriage, come out of there right now. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out of my body right now. Come out of my lungs. Come out of my lungs. Right now. There you go. There it goes. Good. There it goes. Hi, hon. Glad you came back. Thank you. Amen, brother. Thank you, brother. What's going on? Brother, I have some Mary. hidden hidden demons in me. And how'd they get in there? How'd that go? Thanks for helping me. Well, how'd they get in there? According to this, I was born. Come on up here. How'd they get in here? Right there. A family tree. Oh, what was in there? What was in the tree? This is the interesting thing. Uh, my mom put me in a bathtub and turn the hot water and walk away. At what age? I was uh, 16 months. Oh, six, oh, stay right here. <clears throat> Hello. Pretty. <laughs> You're not leaving, are you? Okay. You, you go up here next, okay? Hey. Okay, now, hold on a second. Let me get my eraser. Now, you were in the bathtub at what age? 16 months old. Okay, and she did that for what reason? Oh, it could be a thousand. Why did she do it? I think she was postpartum. My father was beating her. So she, she was pregnant. Her dad? No, my father. Oh, her husband. Or, or your dad. Your dad was beating her? Oh, it's, you know, you okay. Sicilian and all that. Very oh, they were Italians? My mom is Irish. Okay. So, was she hot tempered too? Not so much. But okay. He was beating her. Yes. And why did she put you in the tub? Let her go. I believe Let her that go. she had postpartum. Did you ever talk to her about it? You know what? They were they divorced when I got out of the hospital. How, I went at, at, the at, at one. I'm all at one. Huh? At age one. No, they no, divorced today. No. You were how old? They were, were you? divorced uh, when I was five. Oh, five. But when I came out of the hospital, they were already gone. Basically. Now, hospital. At what age? Did you come out of the hospital. I was at the L.A. County, and then I went to Shriners Hospital. Now, how old were you? Eighteen months. Twenty. Oh, okay. All the way through. But so they were split up after your burn. And I went to Golden with my grandfather and grandma. Oh, okay. Good. Went to grandma. I had like Twenty. Now, anyway, now your grandma, was a trial. your grandma and grandma, grandpa, what were they like? My grandpa was very loving. He would come to the hospital and feed me. He would that, is that me. your mom's dad? My mom's dad. Okay. And then, and then your grandmother was what, like what? Uh, what else is it? She was kind of, she was, you know, she, okay. Anyway. So what happened was God intervened to save you. Release her, let her go right now. Yes. By the love. Found me. He says, Scott, I heard you crying blocks away. I got home and no one was home and I picked you up on all your skin tone. Go, go, go. God. Go. Wanted you out of this family because you were in danger. And out of love, unbeknownst to you, because you were a baby, you got transferred over two people who love. Yeah. Proper love. That, and you had how many surgeries? Oh, I can do some. I walk on my affliction. But you know what the miracle is? I'm able to walk. How many surgeries? Oh, probably close to 20. And between what ages? 
It's between uh, 16 months yeah. and uh, probably 15, 16. To 16. Yeah. Okay. But most of them were done when I was four, six. Okay. But I've had spinal, I've been then, everything. Oh my gosh. And then when you were in kindergarten, did you get bullied? In grade school? Always in school, but I, I, was, I went to school there. You ever seen him? I'm just aware. At Shriners Hospital. I okay, but, kindergarten. Uh, when you got when out of there, grade, went... yeah. They bullied me, they, they made fun of me in the whole Okay. Yeah. All right, now, now we know what happened. <clears throat> it was horrible. This demon right here got into your brain. It's the spirit of rejection. Right, abandonment. And he got in there when you were a baby. Oh, excuse me. Sorry about that. When you were a baby. And he died right in front of you. Right, when I was nine. And that. Okay. And next, then you, you were nine. This is after you've been bullied for years. Well, not bullied, but. In school, made fun of. Mocked. Yeah. Mocked. Yeah. In school for yeah. till you were nine. Grandpa died at nine. The, okay. I started, I started working then, at 13. Iron cats for living. Okay. And yeah. then the next trauma after that was? On my own. At a teenager. <laughs> what happened to you? Listen, no one was there to take care of me. You were on your own at what age? 13. 14. 13. Horrible. Wow. Yeah. 13. But See I that? Did. Today I had a Bible study of and, the destruction. <laughs> all right, now listen, that's not going to help us. No, no, no. Now, uh, at 13, you were on your own. Yeah. More trauma. More trauma. Then the next major trauma was? The next major trauma. While you were uh, supporting yourself. I remember yourself. having a can of tuna fish for Christmas. Loneliness. What, what year was that? What age? So, uh, 72. No, excuse me. 76. Well, 76. How old were you then? Well, I'm, I'm, I was born in 62. So, at 13, I had a can of tuna fish for Christmas. So, 72, so 3, 74, 75, 76. And I'm thinking now, to myself, how come I don't have any up here? Yeah, now your dampa died at 9. Where was your grandma? My grandma went to Oregon. She took my young And left you? She left me with my younger brother and sister to watch over them for a few months. Younger and brother and sister from this, these parents? Yeah, I have a younger brother and sister. And I have two older Okay. So I was watching them, and my real dad would come by and drop 20 bucks off a week, never, just so I could buy some food. But never came up to this, you know what I'm saying? Never okay, and then, it was and then, like a, then your virginity was at what age? Lost? My virginity? Yeah. So, uh, 15. Okay, and then did you get married later? I've been married. How many times? Uh, three. three times? Okay. I married my wife twice right here. <laughs> oh, so there have been married two people. You've been married to two people. I had her and okay, three people. Okay, and then your dad abusing your mom. Did that happen? In front, yeah. in girlfriend. And did, did you develop those skills? Yes. Did you abuse them? Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah. All right. Now, now we now we understand. Okay. This rejection demon took over your life. Yes, mm. he, he caused it. Yeah. He caused it only. He did it. That's the one we want now. And then this guy taught you to see women. I reconciled with her when she passed. She said, Scott, you read the Bible to me. Pray over me. Start your woman. Doesn't matter. Okay. You saw women at. She's in the Bible that he uses the foolish things. Oh God. He's doing it. Women that are. That's, that's a good point. Women, period. No. The women that are dominant. Hmm? A dominant. You know what I'm saying? Aggressive. Mm -hmm. You said the name earlier. Excuse me. You had a couple working with you. <laughs> anyway, not all. But you know more than I do. <laughs> but first wife. 
And whatever we do that sometimes, Lord God, we start to see this one. the things in ourselves that the devil was for us about. But what yeah, you tell tough. us is that we are a child of God. We're a child of God. We're the apple of your eye. We're your favorite you. thing. You can't stop so thinking about it. Your, your future, obviously, looks really bleak. Uh, that's why we're here. He's not going to let you go, and he hates her guts. Not trusting, leaning on her own understanding. He can't stand women. According to her feelings, feelings. Dad, mother, transfer. Oh, God. According to the flesh, we will reap those things. The devil took her peace. That's why we're here. She's had no She's dying because of him. Right. She's striving. She's like Mike said. We're He's killing her. We're looking yeah. at all the flaws. We're looking at all the flaws. We're looking at all the flaws and all the things that are wrong with people. Instead, we should be edible. What are we going to do about that? We should be loving you, them just as they are. We're going to get you to repent. You loved us. Would we? Because this wasn't your fault here. So, Lord, I'm going to extend that grace. I'm going to extend that same mercy that you gave to me. Would we? Now it's your fault. Yeah. Now it's your fault. Oh, yeah. Back like then, it was not your fault. Right. You were innocent. Innocent. Totally. And God has been watching you all this time. Right now, has to go in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Following me. Yeah. How's that? Waiting for you to love. It's called love. Waiting for you to repent of your sin and get him out. Yeah. The problem is your dad's in there. What's his name? He never was it yet. His name is Steve Coy. Steve. Steve's demons are in there. Dad is still here. He changed his name. <laughs> they didn't change his name. This guy is the same. Yeah. This is spiritual. And he's passed on with my mom. No, he's dead, but they're still here. Yeah. From your dad. And in, in the Bible, it says if a man dishonors his wife, his prayers are hindered. Yes. So now we're really screwed. So you're going to be praying for this and that and that and that. It's blocked. Yeah. All started with him and dad. How do we uproot it? How do we snip the root? Well, uh, number one, uh, you have to know what's happening here, which is what I'm trying to do now. I'm trying to give you the information yes. to see why you're sick. He did this to you. He did it. This is the spirit of rejection. I got it. Put in the tub. You got out of the hospital. They're gone. They're gone. But you know, I followed your instructions that you gave. You know, the what you emailed. If you don't forgive them, we can't. You, nothing, nothing will work. But. You, you already did. did. You know, you sent me an email. You already did. Yeah. Yeah. Now they got it. Now they have to come out. Right. Will you help me? Yeah, I'm helping you right now. I'm trying to. I'm trying to give this information. <laughs> this is what happened to you. Yes. Okay. And when when you treat her like your dad treated your mom. We can't get anything out. You're finished. So here, we're on deliverance day. Yeah. We're being delivered today. Well, that's up to you now. Okay. We've been working on this for a long time. I'm at her feet every day. One round more, I'm sorry. Just like that. I don't. Every day I'm weak. What's your dad's name? What's your dad's name? Dad's name? His name was Steve Corey, C O R R I. That's what he changed it to. Steve? Yes, S T E V E. Okay. Now, when's the last time you had a hard cry? Last night. Over. Yesterday. What were you crying over? My daughter, I have a 34 year old daughter. And uh, 
I raised her by she had, the mom left. When she was a baby, she was born in jail and I fought to get custody. Her, her grandma helped me raise her. She, I want custody and she said, well, I guess you're just going to keep her from me. I said, no, quite the contrary. You're going to help me raise her. And she just about passed out. Anyway, my daughter's 34 and uh, she's the exact opposite of mine. She doesn't want anything to do with Jesus. Or you. What's that? Or you. What do you mean? Her. Hmm? Does she want anything to do with you? Oh, yes, yeah, she's talking to me. Does she like you? Yeah. Okay. But why were you we crying? We only text now. <laughs> why were you crying well, over your daughter? She was married to another lady, and she got a divorce. And I've been praying that the word of God would break that marriage, which it did. And now she's met another lady, 36 years old. She sent me a picture of herself, and I just started weeping. Because why? I saw that look of loss, being controlled by a demonic spirit. And yeah. I just, I just had a bitter weep last night. I said, Good. Lord Jesus, help this young girl. Okay. And I started weeping. I said, there's nothing I can do. And you know what? I had that bitter weep. I was like, wow. Good. She's in church. Now, let's uh, let's uh, have another bitter weep here over your miserable life. And this demon that ruined you so, and broke up all these relationships and hurt all these women and lost all this money and caused all this abandonment and scarred your body up. I'm asking to forgive him, Lord, for anybody he ever hurt. Anybody he ever hurt. I'm asking to forgive you. Anybody he ever hurt. Anybody ever verbally abused. Any bitterness he used to hold for being dumped in a tub and burned up. Any self pity he used to have. I ask you to forgive him for it. I want you to give him back his tears for the pain that he caused you when he was hurting other people. The person he hurt the most was you. I call upon the mighty name of Jesus. Please, no. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Let's take the same that's when I tried to dress that guy up. And I found out he had this book. Well, I already had three books. But his book was free. So I said, oh, I'll check it out. And I started reading. I was amazed. That all his. All the way out. You speak in tongues. I shall get louder. I shall maha mahila maha. I shunned the hala maha. They humble. Under the matala mata. Good, good, good. Let your tears go. Come on. Come on. Satan. Steve, come out of there. Steve, come out. Steve. Steven, come out. Steven, come out. Stephen, come out. 
<laughs> there it is. Keep coughing. Come out. There it comes. Here they come. Here they go. Hold that. Come out right now. Go. Come out, devil. Come out. Come out. Come on, buddy. It's his dad's demons. Oh, what's his name? Dad, Steve. Steve. Come on, Steve. Steve, come out of him now. Keep coming. Come on, stomach right now. All those spirits are bad. Come out now. Steve. You wife abuser. You woman hater. You woman beater. Come out. You wife beater. Come out of there. Jesus name, all that violence. You wife beater, come out. Come out now in Jesus' name. Come out right now. Get out of that body right now. Come out of that body. There he is. Come on, Satan. Satan, lose your hold. There he is. Come out of there, you pervert. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out. Evil, come out of you. Evil. Come out, evil. All the spirits from that. You woman hater, I command you to come out. Come out. The demon that hates women. Come out of him. Satan, lose your hold of him. Come out of the story, cons. There he is. Come out of there. Loneliness. Abandonment. The tuna spirit. Come out. Come out there, you tuna demon. Go in Jesus' name. There he goes. Come on, Satan. Come out of the man of God. Come out of this man of God. Come out. Satan, I command you to come out. Get out of that body. Get out of that body right now. Every demon from Grandpa. Louder. Good. Good. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, amen. Come out. Come out of there. No, now we got to get the death of your grandpa. The spirit of death that hunted him down. He left grandpa's body, killed him, and then came to get this one. No. There he is right there. Here he comes. Satan, come out. Grandpa. Satan, come out. Come out. That he just passed. Steve's demon. Get out of the body right now, Steve. There he comes. Come out, Steve. Come out, Steve. Steve, and go. He was the nicest person in my life. No, these demons are the worst person in your life. Come out, buddy, Steve. Steve, come out. Steve, come out. The demons that murdered Steve. Come out there. Come out right now. Right now, quickly. Come out. Come out. Come out. There he comes. There it is. Come out. Come out. Come out of that body. Come out of that body. All that trauma. Come out of that body. Get out of that body. Come out of that body. Go. Get out of there right now. Come out of her brain right in a second. You clear that body out right now. Stop tormenting her. Stop putting negative thoughts in her head. Stop running her down. Stop giving her hopelessness. Come on. Come on right now, I said. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Stay right there. Listen, listen, your tongue is blocked. Okay, let's is fix it. it. Yeah, let's, let's, fix, let's it. fix it. Okay, let's fix my tongue. Just pray after me. Okay, Pula Vasa. Pula Vasa. Kemosati. Kemosati. Bukaba. Bukaba. Andolia. Andolia. Ashamisi. Did you notice that I was speaking in short syllables? That's all I have. Like you do? I like to But I was using different syllables. It was Hold very good. It. Stay over here. Okay. Okay. Now, did you notice I was using different syllables? Yes. Did you notice yours is stuck on four or five syllables? You use the same ones over and over. Yeah. Notice that? Yeah. My tongue is blocked. Huh? Yeah, it's My tongue blocked. is blocked. It's uh, similar in English to having a stutterer. You can communicate, but it doesn't flow smooth. See? You see that? 
Can now, you that with me? now uh, you happen to notice your personality is very intense. You have a very strong personality, and people are intimidated by you. Yeah. And they don't feel comfortable around you. Okay. Did you know that? I wasn't aware of that. You know you weren't. Do you, you notice you have an intensity about you? Go preach, brother. Oh yeah, too soon. You notice that? He wants you to go too soon. You don't see that either? Yeah. Did you notice you talk a lot? You didn't notice that either? Okay, let's skip that then and go to the tongues. So, now this time you follow me and then you add some so syllables on your own, okay. only there'll be different syllables. Use different ones. Romo shave velova bondo shantada. Good. Romo shave velova bondo Any syllable. You go. Romo shave Different syllables. Good. Good. Bondo shantere mo shantere. Good. Different syllables. Different syllables. Good. Good, 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 good. Different syllables. Different syllables. Any syllable. Good, any syllable. Anyone. Yeah, good. Good. Hey, you know what his wife looks like? The one that was sitting back here in that brown. Yeah, I got to get her. She's skinny, kind of thin, thin. All right, let's let's switch it. Let's switch it. Uh, let, now I want you to sing it out, okay? Okay. Just put a little hum to the syllables. Good, good, good. Hey, have a seat over here, will you? All right, now listen up. He's loaded. Uh, a whole rack of a whole rack of demons come out of him five minutes ago. This is all left. No, 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 no. no. But uh, he, his dad used to beat his mom. And so that demon uh, that hated women jumped into him. He doesn't lift his hand to me anymore. He, what? he won't lift his hand to me anymore. It's, no, that, strongholds are not as strong as their lesson. I'm not talking about beatings. No, this isn't about beatings. His dad, the demon, beat his mom. Okay? But the same demon got into him. See, and so these people, if they don't beat women, they see them as second class, they, they uh, verbally abuse them, or they might disrespect them, or they don't treat them right, that kind of thing, same demon, only it manifests in physical with this person, but verbal in that person, okay, so it's different in him. No, no, okay. I used to get hurt. I did used to get hurt, but not no more. And we're not going to be able to get him delivered unless he apologizes to you and stops mistreating you. They're not going to come out. I know, I know. Okay, so I'm going to... The thing that I have is that it's less and he gets better and better and better. No, no. Stop. Stop with him. Okay. Okay. You're in a bad spot. Okay, and your soul is damaged, and you got anxiety, and you want him fixed in a hurry. Fix, get fixed. Hmm? I've known him since 2013. Okay. I'm just saying, I know it's a long process. When I left him for three years, when we divorced completely, I knew that it was going to be a long process. No, I'm trying to shorten it. Yeah, well, of course I want it to be short. And now that we know about deliverance. No, I'm trying to shorten it right now. Right, right. <laughs>
Sorry. No, you're, this is anxiety talk. You're talking to me out of anxiety. Okay. I don't blame you. I mean, if anybody lived with him. So what do you want me to do? Like, uh, I I thank you. Oh, yeah. At a girl. Yeah, of course. Now we go. Yeah. Number one, I need you to relax. Okay. See how tensed up you are? Right. You just let your body relax. The Bible says if a man abuses his wife, then his prayers are hindered. So if, if I can't get him to stop hurting you, he's not going to be able to get his prayers answered. This whole thing is going to go to the verbal. Verbal. It doesn't matter what it is. Verbal. It's got to stop. See, or he's not going to be able to pray and get anything from it. The demons are blocking everything. Okay. Secondly, you're, you're making yourself sick by being hurt and anxious about this thing. Well, see, the thing is, is I'm not really, I don't struggle with anxiety or anxiousness or nothing. We're just because we're here. The Lord has really gifted me and blessed me with none of that. Okay. And so that's why I think he put me with him mm -hmm. because it's a really stronghold. But when the deliverance happens, mm -hmm. I mean, you know. Yeah. No. I need you just to release him. Well, I mean, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's just see. hard because, like the scripture says, like, you know, like if there's one person, the whole house is affected. So it's, it's I'm trying. I'm trying to get you unaffected. And so. This, this thing here. Well, spirits always get worse over time because they're trying to finish you. And they never stay at one spot. They always. Well, like the last two months, since I got that email, that's when I can't keep my mouth shut. Whereas before, I couldn't control it. Well, see, they're starting to ramp up now and try to finish you off. Okay, but they're not going to do that because you're going. You've repented. Yeah, of course. Correct? Yeah, all yeah. the time. And you're, and you're listening. And I finally cried today. <clears throat> I haven't cried in a long time. But your soul is healing. Right. He's trying to heal you. Like, he likes you. He's trying to help you. <laughs> See, so this is, this, is, this is a huge burden here that you have to dump on the Lord. Okay? We got to dump this thing on him. The kid and him. Dump. Let it be fruitful. Let it be filled with joy and love. There's nothing you can do to fix these people. You don't have any ability. I don't either. I can't heal anybody. But if you don't give them away, and go. Come on. Come out of it right now. Come out of that throat right this second. Come out, buddy. Come out of there right now quickly. Stop trying to hide in there. I know what you're doing. You're trying to hide. You're going to attack her later. I went over it in the teaching. Come out of that body right now. And Jesus, she commands you to come out. Go. I command you to come out of my throat right this second quickly. Come out of there. Get out of her mind. Get out of there. Come out of there. Oh, shoot. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hey, can you think of anything that uh, you need to apologize to her for off the top of your head? To my wife? Yeah. Anything at all? Just everything. That you haven't apologized before? What's the two main things? You know what? What hurts her the most? You know. Oh, I hear a lot of yelling. Hey, what? I hear a lot of yelling. She's yelling at me, and I just tell her stop. But what's triggering? She's yelling about what? That's a good point. She calls me a demon. But so what? Why though? What? What is she? What's happening? Any, what, name one thing. What, doing bad what? She says I'm moody. You what? She says you walk in the mood. I said I'm fine. So that will trigger her. Not that stuff, but are you doing anything that's triggering her? I stopped masturbation for two years. No, did that trigger? Did that trigger her? I used to watch series. Huh? The Lord took the lust out of me for her. No, I mean, what triggers her? You masturbate. Hmm? No, I used to. I don't know if that triggered her or not. 
Okay, now, are you telling me you don't know what you're doing that's hurting her? You don't know? Is that what you're saying? Well, I feel like she's a character. I just feel like that. No, I know, but I'm not asking you that. I'm asking you, are you doing anything that you know of? What are you doing? Yeah. If I knew. You don't know is what you're saying. Okay. I could hear him. What would you say? I said I could hear him. Now, listen, him. what's he doing behaviorally that's hurting you? Yeah, I mean. What is he doing, I said? Well, yeah, he gets angry still, obviously. Angry over what? The dumbest thing. What thing? But Name like one if thing. He's, if he's in severe pain, like the, the pain triggers it. What pain? The, the, you got pain and you get angry? Is that from the burn? Yeah. Okay. Walk, you might as well get a visual. Yeah. They barely grew. Okay. They're both that way. They're both that way. Sometimes uh, it's hard to walk. Okay. Just now he gets. And so. He gets, you, you get angry walk. over what? Just anything. It's much better. The strongholds are lessened, but they're still there. For instance, even if even if there's a justification, like how I hear him saying with me, what? I don't say justify. Like when he's what? mad and angry, he doesn't justify that he's throwing out evil or wickedness. He does the same thing, you know. But he's the spiritual leader, and it affects the whole house. Now, when's the last time that happened? Just the day before. Okay, day before. What happened then? Yeah. What happened? Yeah. Um, what did he do? The dumbest things. What was the dumb thing? So, a lot of it is not listening to my voice, or not my voice, but like what the Lord has put in me. What I, you know, revelation, just anything. He won't receive anything from me. Okay. I'm not receiving. Now listen. Uh, I'm not listening, I'm not receiving. Now listen, now. There Th this appears to be uh, based on delusions. Okay, I'm, I'm asking the two of you, third grade questions yeah. and you can't answer them. So that's telling me the demons have brainwashed both of you. I says to him, do you have anything that you need to apologize to her for? He can't think of one thing. Well, because he's which is, guys which is already, but it still happens. All, Thank you. <laughs> then I asked you, it still happens. What still happens? Yelling, anger, anger. Yeah, okay. Yelling. And then the last time he yelled was the day before. before. Day before. And what was the trigger? We have so many. I can't remember the trigger. But like, maybe if we're talking about someone the way he he talks about someone, and I'll do, do you remember when you yelled two day, the day before? Did you get? Did you yell? And then he's asking you. Do you remember? No. Oh. What triggered it? I was called you, demon. Who called you a demon? She calls yeah. me a demon. Did, do you call him a demon? Sometimes when he's talking okay. about so that's what so you're, yeah, Okay. So you're... Know okay. I just want to... Okay. Now, uh, now we have a specific. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Are so you going to... He to divorce me all the time and wants to leave me, so then, okay. so then I'm like, you're acting like a demon. Okay. And then, and then I say, we'll see, yeah. after okay. all... Now, after why are you threatening to leave her? I don't have... I can't handle the yeah. yelling. Oh, the yellow, are you, okay. I'm not a yellow until the last two months since we got okay. that printout. Okay. His his spirit slashed onto me. Now, I can't keep my mouth shut for nothing until okay. I renounce it. Got it. Now we can see clearly what's happening here. Her spirits are manifesting. They hate your guts. Yeah. And when you say something, she starts yelling. Then your demons flare up because she's yelling at you. And I'm trying to leave. And they're both. Yeah. I don't, he's the one who, it, I react all the time, I'm the reactor. He starts it. Negatively. Yeah, yes. See? Yes. And so what's happening here is Satan's winning. Yeah. He's triggering. I'm always in a bad mood. A lot of time I'm just quiet. She's triggering you. Okay, now, that, that's it, weird you can't do that. You could tell, though, that's that's not, I could tell by his face and the way he walks. I could tell by his movements. But I walk funky. Okay, no, but, but I can tell when he's okay, but, but, oppressed. Yeah, okay, I'm with you. I understand that. But you sharing that with him yeah. is throwing fuel on the fire. It's only after something happens. No, what I, happened? Believe me, believe me, I'm not, yeah, 100%, what? I, should, I have no excuse for trying to justify the things that I say. Okay. It's not, okay. But, I, but it's just hard when I'm living with a man. Now, is that, is that you saying it or is that a spirit in there saying it? 
Oh no, I, I told you, I told you, I told the Lord to do whatever it takes. If he mutes me, if I lose my tongue, because it's not worth my son and the pain that he's going through and the torment of the demons. I don't, it's like, here I'm talking crap to him saying, how dare you do this in front of my son. What did he do? Just the yelling and, the, and screaming, fighting. Scott, you still say things, you still yell, you don't yell as much. Yeah, he doesn't yell as much. That demon came to me. Okay. He doesn't yell as much. That's all he did before. But he'll say things like, I wish you were dead, I'm going to divorce you, you know, just, he says stuff, you know. And then he gets mad at my son, he, he blames things on my son, he talks to him stuff. Right. You know what okay. I mean? Okay, now who, who's who's saying that? Is that him or a spirit? Okay. You're then reacting to yes. a spirit. Yes. Correct? Yes. 120% correct. We're sunk. Yeah. Because before he was just doing it, he was. Oh, we're so like a lot, and then slowly but surely, I'm doing everything that I can to just serve God, seek God, and all that. But no matter what, I get words, I get revelations, I hear things, I share with Him, He gets offended. It's not right. I'm saying it wrong. And he constantly pushes me down. So is like, that him doing that or them? The Holy Spirit, of course. Okay. So there's this battle going on now. Like, no, it's a, not a battle. It's a slaughter, and you're losing. Yes. You are losing. I know it reaches you. You cannot spend your life talking to a demon. Yeah, that's why they'll I'm just like, talk to you. The rest I can't keep my mouth shut for nothing. Like I'll do good. And I'm like Lord in the morning. Okay. I submit. I give okay. my. You just said to me, yeah. I can't yeah. keep my mouth shut yeah, for nothing. That's exactly what you just said. That's a lie. That's a spirit yelling back at him. You guys are fighting each other, and it's them. Right. They're puppetizing you. Oh my gosh, I was doing They're making a fool out of you. That's confirmation. I was like, this is what it was like. Oh yeah. And I told yesterday after we got over a quick fight, I said, you know. Fight over what? It, they're so dumb, I can't even think of one right now. See what I mean? This is all demonic. This is not you. We do share love. This is, this is not you. Yeah, I know it's not. It's the, My then, person since I met him has been a different person because. Okay, the, this these are this is spiritual. You're attacking him. It's not him. Yes, I know that. That's it's I'm not saying. her. Right. You guys are being played. Yeah, I don't think it was up to you. You're being played. Yeah, we are being played. The period periods you're full of love are not our problem. No, that that's not on the table. Right. There, th where is it coming from? Yeah, from him, and they're on me now. From him, yeah. him from or his spirit. It's from his blood okay. Blood. Yeah. I told her she has no love. Okay, did you hear that? He said you have no love. He lied. Say, he I lied. And I say things I shouldn't no. be saying. Yes. Yeah. I know. He just lied. It's not her. Right. Yeah. It's the right. Thank you. Yeah. Yesterday. This situation is hopeless. You're talking to her demons. She's talking to your demons. They are never. I feel relaxed, comfortable, and you know what? I'm talking about your relationship in the past. You're talking to her demons. She's talking to your demons. They will talk till doomsday. They don't get tired. You're both being destroyed because you're listening to them. It's not her. You just said it. What's that? You just said it. You said it wasn't her. It was her spirit. You know that. Then why, then why are you responding to her spirit? Good. Good point. Why are you doing that? Because you're deceived. Right. It it's not hurt. It hurt. They hurt you. Yeah. What do you expect the devil to do? That's what he gets paid for. He hurts people. If I become this big, nothing hurts me. You know, the words just go over my shoulder. Okay, now listen, stop it. You're praying idiotic prayers. I need to become this big. I need to be muted. That's not what needs to happen. These are dumb things. I know I got to get delivered. No. Hey, no, have a seat. Listen to me. Look, you've got to stop 
talking to demons. Okay. okay. Witches. And how do we do witches. That? You know witches. They sit around talking to demons. They want to talk to them. Oh, and they, you can, they get information well, from I'm them. Told them. Lord, Lord, yeah. mute my tongue. I mean, don't know. Stop, stop that. Because I'm stop. having a hard time. Stop you stop that. Delivered. Or like this. Or like stop. Like, God's not going to answer <laughs> stupid <laughs> prayers. I mean, did he answer I mean, your prayer? Well, yes, she did. You were muted. No, not well, okay. No, of was, course, he I didn't. Keep Saying evil stuff, that's where I was. He's not going to answer your prayer. You're not listening. God does not control people. I just went over it. Demons control people. It doesn't matter whether you ask. You can ask him for a pet from Mars. He's not going to give it to you. He's not going to mute you. You're a beautiful woman of God, and you're not to... It's frustrating because it's them. That's what demons do. They frustrate people. He listens to your demons. You listen to his. But it's not you two. It's not you two. Stop. You got to repent of it. But that's, it sounds so easy. I mean, I have no, It is easy. No, you haven't. You're not repenting of it. You, his demon says something to you. You react. We read, we pray. Stop. That's not, that's not going to work. That is not going to work. You cannot pray about something and then go serve Satan. You cannot serve two masters. I asked my wife to forgive me. She Did you forgive me? Yeah. Of course. Now you're talking to her, not the spirit. No, it's not. Stop. The demons always come up with current crap. She brings stuff up from 10 years ago. No, she did. And there you go again. No, no, no. no. You did it again. No, but I wanted to, I wanted to bring it You did it. No, you did it again. Well, I wanted to bring it over in front of you. No, hold on. He, he did it again. Now you're doing it. He said you bring up stuff. It's not her doing it. You lied. You lied. He lied. You just lied. You said he wants to divorce me. It's not him. You lied. You are a liar and you're a liar. Stop lying. It's not him. That his spirits hate your guts because they know you have spiritual potential and they know you have the ability to serve the Lord. They know that, so his demons, he's not doing it. You are not that person. You are not this person. You are turning into a horrible person. It's not you, it's him. He's doing it. This is not you. He said, oh, you want that? He's lying. It's not you. He's deceived. The demon. No, you are. You think it's her. Oh, no more. That's what you said. You just said it two minutes ago, didn't you? You said you, when he, if you use the word you, that means you as a person, not your demon. That's you. He said you. You said you. Right, right. I get it now. Thank you. You guys are fine. Yeah. And we accept that. And we're full of love. Listen, there's not... You, what so I'm when saying... I, when the, that it doesn't matter whether you... Or I'm thinking that, I just don't say it. No, you you have just to... Just don't say nothing. No, no, no. I, I proclaim his name. No, no, no. Okay. You recognize where it's coming from. Uh -huh. That's not you. I reject that thought. That's that's him. The demon's right. doing that. Right. right, right. How do we get that demon? You can't get a demon out your feeding. No, you just keep. They won't come out. Then he'll leave you alone, right? No, they will. They will not leave you alone. Keep rejecting it. Nope. You got to reject it and get them out. How do you? Get, how do we do it? You just. You were just over there doing it. Why no? Oh, <clears throat> we're able to do that at our house. Well, of course. Okay, that's. You can do it any way you want. You have a wonderful anointing. So do you. You do it anywhere you want. Thank you. But you can't get a demon out that you're feeding. So if you say he wants to divorce me, you don't love me. You just said you, the demons are doing cartwheels. We got them. First tense. Oh, what is it? First, yeah. Don't use They win. Thank you. Every day.
I feel yeah, bad. Again, it's not her. Yes. I'm actually in love with my wife. You said you are. The demon hates her guts. But I You her. do. You she love her. She knows that. You, oh, honey. She knows I love her. He loves you. The demon hates your guts. That's why he triggers you. He's, he uses him to say stupid stuff to you. He says stupid stuff. Correct? Yeah. And that hurts you. Well, it wouldn't hurt you if you knew where it was coming from. If you knew that wasn't him and it was, this was a trick and a setup, you would go, hey, I'm not falling for that anymore. We need to think before we speak. You need to think of who's saying that. See? Number one, okay. Do you hate him? No. Not even close. I wouldn't. Go. Not even close. Did you hear that? Yeah. Did you hear that? I, I received it too. That's why we're still together. I know Her spirits well. hate your guts. Yeah. Here's you. Here's the demon. You are not a demon. You are a beautiful woman of God. This is not you. Responding like that, that's them doing it. You do not hate him. Right. I love the removal of barn these barnacles, boy. You can't remove a barnacle you listen to and repeat. Right. Yeah. If you're entertaining it. You can't do it. You if you're entertaining it, you I cannot get rid of it. I entertaining that by you're, saying oh. you instead of you're her. you're supporting him. You're massaging right. him. You're yeah. feeding him. So, you're loving him. Oh, that hurts. Yeah. You're doing it. And I don't want to hurt her. He said, I don't want to hurt her, but then his demon pops up and hurts you. Yeah. See the difference? He's here and the spirits are here. This is who you're talking to. Stop talking to them. <clears throat> What's the worst thing he ever said to you? He said to him? Him said to you. The worst thing. Um, for my unborn baby. What did he say? To go to hell. All right. And me. Perfect. See that? Can you forgive me? That wasn't him. Please forgive me. I know. Please. That wasn't him. Please, honey. Forgive me. I know you're my queen. And I love you. Thank you, honey. Yeah, I don't want to harm you. You'll never harm her again if you don't, if you'll just stop listening to demons. That was not him that said, go to hell. He said it. Yeah. He did it deliberately to hurt you. And it did hurt you. And you can release it right now, can't you? Okay, just take a big breath and let's let that go. Big breath. Good girl. Breathe again. Come out. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. It wasn't my husband, it was them. I forgive my husband. I do not forgive these demons. I don't want them gone. I hate their guts. I forgive my husband. I do not forgive Satan. I forgive my husband. I do not forgive Satan. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Never again. Never again. It's good to have refreshment. Thank you. We've been looking forward to this day. Now listen, when you get a revelation from God or something, please don't share that with him. That's for you. If his demons hear you get a revelation, they're going to manifest again, try and bash you in the face. That's no good. That's not valid. That's wrong. It's for both of us, though. Huh? Sometimes it's for both of us. Though. No, then don't share it. Oh, well, when do I share these things? You don't share them. Never? Nope. You don't do it until you're completely oh, you cured and you're clear of mind. Put a stop on any revelations. Okay. Okay. I'll just write them down like I do. I'll write them down and don't share them with him. Yeah, because I don't. I haven't. I because don't tell them all of them. His spirits will trigger. Yeah. And they'll denigrate them. And then that's going to hurt that's you. where I'm thinking, like, Lord, I want to be obedient, but he holds, like, he holds me back in those areas. So it's like, where's that balance? Do I step okay. forward to say something? Yeah, stop. Okay. You just said a series of things that were not true. 
Number one, you said he. So how do I refer to you this? Said he. I say the unclean spirits? He did it, not him. So the unclean spirits. So right. That's him. The unclean spirits. Yeah, is that a girl? Well, I know this. And Look, I, I know you know it, but it's hard no, to. It's no, hard. It's different. <laughs> it's hard to remember long. every. Yeah. It's hard to remember anything when you're under fire. But if you remember in Ephesians 6, Paul told the Ephesians the same thing I just told you. He said, listen, Ephesians, you see all this crap happening to you? This guy got martyred. That one got beat up. This one thrown in prison. This crap, that crap. He said, listen, it's not these people. It's this. Ephesians 6, He's, here's the hierarchy. And he explained it to them. He said, this is your real enemy, not these Romans raping you and stealing you. They're doing it. Principalities, powers. My son and I know See that? 10 through 17. See that? Yeah. That's what he was saying to them. The same thing I'm saying to you. Yeah. It's not her. It wasn't your dad. They told him to beat her. I got that. Then they transferred into you. Yeah. Then they told you to blame women for this and that and that and this. It's all a trick. What's the goal? Divorce. You die sick and alone. That's where it was headed. Okay. Oh, that's where he's going. I saw it. If you don't change, you guys are doomed. It's that simple. And there's no reason you can't change. You have a nice anointing. You got a good heart. He has a nice anointing. All you got to do is stop listening to them. Paul said, listen, these Romans are over here. What's really happening is they're controlling the Romans. Right? Yeah. Correct? Am I right? That's what Paul said. It's them. They're doing it. So if I could just ask you a scenario. So for instance, say like something starts to manifest between him and myself and whatnot. And even for me to say, there you go, your unclean spirits. Like, just, instead of saying it like that, how would it, I? How do we address what's going on at that moment without me being like you or the, your unclean spirits? Even saying your, how do we address it when it's happening? Do well, we just go into prayer right away? Like what? We renounced it. What do we do? No. Uh, if I were to tell you, um, you know what? I was praying over there about 15 minutes ago, and. Uh, I got a revelation that you're a Martian. Uh -huh. And I I think you are a Martian. A Martian or Martian? Martian from Mars. Okay. How'd that go? I'm just like, okay, really? <laughs> you remember the question you asked me? Yeah, like how, when okay, it really? manifests, but not uh, in a calm voice. No, a, doesn't matter. Stuff. Uh, you're a Martian. Yeah, go to, go to hell, you evil Martian. You're a Martian, you go to hell. Yeah, so then what? How'd that go? Yeah. What'd you well, do? I guess because you're saying like it's not penetrating me. It's victory. Right. Right. Yeah. You blew me off. The fairy, the fiery arrow. You just blew me. Satan. You just blew me off. Beautiful. You didn't believe you were a Martian. You knew I made that up, right? Well, you know they're making this up. They're making it up. Yeah, and that's why I go to my room most of the time and I close my door because we just need that separation. That's my only way that I know how sometimes, but... Okay, if you would, if you treated it as a Martian incident, right. you would go... I see what you're saying. Really? Okay, I see what you're saying. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I've, yeah, if I really that's like not real. Me, but God says who I am, that no matter who tells me what, it doesn't not matter. Me. They are going to tell you that. Right. Okay. Boy, they're so alive. That's your job. Okay. Well, they've come across. There's nothing wrong with you. No, I know that. I know it's that. them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and they want you to blame him. You know, when we started the ministry up there in Corus Junction, we'd just been. Yeah, I wouldn't start any ministry if I were yeah, you. Yeah, it's just crazy. Because Everybody. you're going to get attacked. Well, yeah. we've been doing this for a while We're now. going on a year Oh, now. gosh. Yeah. I would uh, drop all of that. Well, What we need to do here is fix this we first. We wanted to get the deliverance up there. 
<clears throat> we're walking around like yeah, zombies. Yeah, well, you're not in condition to do that. Yeah. So this has to be fixed first. That's what Paul said. He said, We have our good moments. Yeah, okay. No, not many good moments. Now, that's not what Paul said. <laughs> yeah. He's misquoting the Bible. <sighs> we have our good mo moments. That's when you and he are together, not them. Right. There's no good moments with them. Correct. They try to disrupt everything. And if you react to it, they got you. Because like you did me, you blew it off. You just, hm, I'm a Martian, stupid. You see that? We've been here a couple times. If you don't react to them, yeah. your prayers are going to be answered because you won't be offending her. If a husband dishonors his wife, their prayers are hindered. Right. But if you well, recognize apologies. it's not your wife, right there, it, it, apologies don't do any good well, if you go back and do it again. Well, but he's doing it again because he's not seeing it's not you. Yeah. I'm truly repentant. Whatever comes out of my mouth, she knows if it's bad. Well, if you're truly repented, you would now, right now, from this day forward, mm -hmm. stop yeah. listening to them. Right. That's repentance. That's why we're here. That's repentance. And learn something very valuable we both have. Right? We have a life. And it's not being controlled by Satan. We have our free will to love Jesus. And well, you've got you've got you got free will yeah. not to listen to them. Yeah, I don't want to walk in that finished work. The Lord. Well, listen, this isn't us. finished. Now we just started today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so yeah. this is going to have to be walked out. You're going to have to learn that if His Spirit says something stupid, you're going to give them the blow off. Okay. okay. Because that's the truth. Mm -hmm. You will know the truth, and the truth will. Yeah. It's not him. Yes. It was his dad. And the lack thereof. He beat his mother. She was. What are you thinking about? I don't know. Hmm? I don't know. Just how. You don't know. How to go from here? Like, what's the plan? Like for us? Well, here's the plan. If his spirits say anything, you are not going to listen to them. That's the plan. Mm -hmm. So I guess we continue to come back until they all come out. <laughs> because you don't have to come back, but yeah, you got to get them all out. Where if you do it here or somewhere, it doesn't matter to me as long as you're free. I like being here. I've okay. been down here a few times. So if you need to come back a couple more, hey, we'll always be here for you. But the bottom line is we'll never get them out if you keep listening to them. Right. They'll be in there till you're 80 years old. That's a great, great perspective. I don't think you'll make it to 80. They're going to kill you. But uh, hypothetically, they'll be in there till you're 80 if you don't stop listening to them and kick them out of there. Just listening to a negative thought that triggers it. It's their thought. Yeah. Yeah. They told your dad to beat your mom. Yeah. They did it. You were a kid, and there's no way for you to know that. Yeah. You were little. Abandoned issues, yeah. Do you love him? Not in love with him. I was just the divorce. I no, but do you love the guy? Okay. Well, then this is worth saving. Yeah. Correct? She used to be in love with me. I believe that we'll get there again. 
Okay, well, that's down the road, depending on how you, who you listen to from this day forward. If you keep listening to them, your marriage is shot. It's over. You guys will never make it. By the grace of God, we're here. You with me? Did you ever see The Wizard of Oz? Dorothy comes back with the broomstick. Do you remember that? She went to get the Wicked Witch of the West broomstick. Because yeah, Oz. Right? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. The Wizard of Oz said, if you bring me that broomstick, okay. I'll send you back to Oz. Okay. She goes, okay. She comes back. She's got the broomstick, lays it down there. He says, come back tomorrow. Well, she gets mad. What are you talking about? I want to go home now. Okay. Toto, this terrier, runs over there and grabs the curtain and pulls that thing back. And there's an old man working a bunch of levers that couldn't whip his way out of a wet paper bag. He was a complete loser. You just did it now. Yeah. That. It's not us. Pull the curtain back. There they are. They're doing it. There was no Wizard of Oz. It was a fabrication. This is a fabrication. This is a fabrication. It's not her. That may, if you respond to the, her demons, that makes you like a warlock. If she responds to your demon, that makes her like a witch. You know what warlocks and witches do? They sit around trying to listen to demons. That's what they do. This has to end now if the boy's ever going to be healed. We got to get the kids. They're on the menu. Yeah. Thank you for your time. You both have a nice anointing. A bunch of demons came out on this trip. A bunch of demons just came out. Don't tell me you don't have it. I saw it. Yeah. Thank you. We can win this. Oh, I know we can. Well, see? That's her talking, not the demon. Hear that? It's because it's today. She said, I know we can. I heard her. I believe her. Every time he wants to divorce, I, mean, I never say I want to divorce. No. I never say I want see, to no, it was I his see. demon wants to divorce. Oh, yeah. He can't stand you. I always keep, uh, keep your eyes on Jesus and he'll put He's, the pieces He together. can't stand you. He wants a divorce. I got to remember. I want a divorce from the He's got a divorce so. demon. That's not her yelling. Oh, yeah. And you know what? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> it's not her yelling. Oh, okay. I'm getting scared right now. Uh, <clears throat> why? I'm not sure he's listening. I'm not why? sure you're listening. Oh, no. No, it's going to take a moment. Somebody. Mind has to really, like, we grasp it. There like, was no Wizard of Oz. Yeah, I know. He was a fabrication. Yes. Yes. There's no demon. There's no but he here wants a divorce. It's a demon that wants a divorce. Why would it want a divorce? I'll be alone. You he doesn't divorce. want a divorce. Want yeah. He doesn't want a divorce. So beautiful, yeah, my wife. They want one. Yeah. yeah, of course. They don't like you yeah. for yeah. obvious yeah. reasons. So I don't got remarried. I don't blame them. <laughs> if I was a demon, I wouldn't like you either. You know how to pray. <laughs> you got a good heart. You're a good person. I wouldn't like you either. Correct? Yeah. But as long as you keep talking to that thing, he's going to beat us half to death. Okay. We want to share a dinner with you, oh, you and your wife. Amen. I don't want you to share anything else with demons anymore. I want a divorce. <laughs> Thank you. You hear me?
divorce from the demons. Yes, that's exactly what we want. Couldn't have put it better myself. Okay. Is your wife a part of this also? Mm. Uh, not really, kind of. Can I give you this? <laughs> yeah, the offering. Thank yeah, you, thank offering. You thank you. Love now listen, uh, you're going to send me an email tomorrow or something, right? Let me know how tonight goes. I have one in there in a draft, and I never sent it. No, don't send that one. Send me a new one. I uh, since Since we already had went through this today, we've had good news here, so I want a different email. Thanks for the call this morning. And then, okay, and then we'll take I'm it from... Like, huh? Like a heaviness right here. Yeah, that's him. See, he's mad because he it's not re he it's received some truth. No, it's not settled. That's him. You're right. You it's not settled completely. The ones that have come out, he's scared because he's already lost support squad. They're already out, and now he's panicking. And he wants her. It's the unclean spirit. So excommunicated. Us, that's right from the demon. We're gonna divorce him in the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't said it better myself. Because <laughs> I'm trying to think of like things that are like just things that are going to happen, and how I'm going to just. You already know what's going to happen. Yeah, of course. No, you've been through it a million times, but they're doing it now. See, you're seeing it from a different perspective. Yes. She's not yelling at you. You're right. And there's no reason to respond to it. <clears throat> Thank you. You feel good? No, he's getting ready to come out. I feel a little lightheaded. He's, I mean, earlier today, you know, I felt really good, the lightheaded, but... It's no, he's getting ready to come out because he's getting ticked off again. <laughs> he's losing. Why don't we have... They lose. No. They're losing. They don't like to lose. Nobody likes to lose. Can I ask you something off to the side here? As we're praying over people... We just say, come out in the name of Christ Jesus, or do we say, we bind you in the blood of Jesus, come out? Does it matter what we say? Oh, I wouldn't do either right now. Just abandon that ministry until this is all fixed up here. It's, so stop doing that. It's a community uh, effort. Huh? It's we've got like 20 people that should oh, no. bring food. And more than that. For, for, for what? Homeless people or something? Well, food for what? We do Bible study. Well, this Bible have, studies. Yeah. I'm reading the Bible. But slowly but surely, after we're completely delivered, our temples are clean and pure. That's the goal. Then yes. we want to bring in the deliverance. We want to have the deliverance. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. As long as he continues thing. to just do his basic Bible study. That's all we do. No, that goes without saying. Yeah. We've been That's... doing this for over a year now. Oh, okay. Can you believe well, it? The Lord has kept it together. Anyway. Okay, well, let's let's go with the Bible studies, and let's finish this off. This is number, priority one is this. Bible studies are two. Oh, for sure. We'd like to come down once a week. You know, we live up here in there, right? Oh, so you do? close the freeway oh. at 9 o'clock at night oh, okay. up there at Sunset Cross. I oh. But I come down, and I've seen David, David on Fridays. Yeah, he, he preaches once in a while. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, When's the next time you're you're sharing, you're preaching? I'm preaching next Friday. Now. Okay. We'll come down. Between now and Friday. Yeah, we'll see you Friday. You're going deaf to them. <laughs> deaf. Like that. You know what this means? I, I like just that. cough probably yeah. and those stuff will come out. Yeah. True. I love that. That was good. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. This is so beautiful. You know what this means? Talk to the hand. When I was young, that used to be a big deal. To talk to the hand. That means you don't listen to that person. Just talk to the hand. That's what you're going to do to them. Talk to the hand. Come here. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Come out of there right now. Let's go. Come out of that body right now. Go. Come out. Come out of there. Right this second. The demon that hates her husband's guts. There he comes. Good. Hey, how'd that go over there? How'd it go? Over here? Yeah. Your prayer time. How'd that go? Good. Ask for some stuff to get loose. Was it loose? Was it loose? Come out right now. Go, Lord. 
Lord, I think so. Yeah, you speak in tongues? Do you speak in tongues? A little bit, yeah. Oh, okay. And I've been practicing it. Go ahead. I don't speak in tongues. Uh, Go ahead. If I'm do usually during worship, oh, it'll, do start it. coming, it'll start popping out of me. Oh, well, go ahead. The tongues don't work like that. Okay, now go ahead and repent of it. practice enough for me to just start. Oh, no, no practicing. There's, you don't practice tongues. Uh, there you go. Good, good. Good, 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 good. Excellent. Stop. Okay, now your gift of tongues blocked a little bit. So let's unblock it, okay? Sure. Now just follow and pray after me. Urava. Kemosata. Ekomasi. Bodida. Now, did you notice I was using short syllables, different syllables? I was using different syllables. You didn't notice that? Okay, try it again. Kolamasa. I was paying attention. Uravashe. Kolamasa. Emosavata. Bendolashi. Bendolashi. You see, I, that's four syllables. Do you notice that? Bendolashi. You just said that. Okay. That was four syllables. Correct? Correct. Because you just said it. Bendolashi. Four syllables. Uh, dog is one syllable. California. California. Four syllables. Bendolashi. You just said four syllables. And they were different syllables. Hurry up. Here he comes. Come up and out. When you were speaking in tongues, you were using the same syllables over and over. No, do you remember that? No, I wasn't, I don't, I wasn't paying attention. Okay. Either that or I wasn't present. Yeah, that's okay. Try it again. Let go. Come up and out. Hurry. Hurry up. Hurry up. Let that throat go. Let that throat go. Let that throat go. Yes. Notice that? It's the same. It was the same thing. Now we'll switch it and use different syllables. Afishemo la bashava, endosha dimo, ataro boshata, vaka boshata ramasite. Good, just like that. Keep going. Unde moshandra moshatrasa, bendo moshando bohu bu boshata ravaside, hello la la mashudo boshuturova, kendo shandro moshat. Andara Moshandara Vaside, Unda Mashandra Moshandra Moshite, Vasu Masabi Shebega, De Moshadra Moshadeba. You speak Spanish? No. Uh, that's because I'm legal. The house is red. Say that. The house is red. Did you notice when you said that sentence, you were using different words? Words. The house is red. Four words. You notice that? Yeah. They were different words. Different from what? They were different words. The house is red. Four different words. None of them were the same. Lemoshavasa. I just said five syllables that were totally different. No repeats. What I just said. You notice that? No repeats. That's what your tongues is. It's like a language. Only it's a heavenly language. It comes out of your spirit man. I went on spirit man over there. Remember? You said here? Yeah, remember? Your spirit man. I had a drawing up there. Spirit, that's where your tongues are. They're in there. So, so during worship, I was on a job site. I was on a job site, and I was I had my worship music going. And out of nowhere, I've been going through a lot of things at that moment, four or five months ago, and I was overcoming things, a lot, a lot of stuff. And I wasn't negative, and I wasn't. I was just. I was. I was overcoming stuff, and when my worship music was going, I started sensing something, 
and I spoke out to myself loud. I said, it's happening, it's happening. And I went, Brrrr! right? I mean, loud and I had water coming down my face and I didn't need not one person to tell me that that was tongues. But I, I never had tongues and not like that. <laughs> and and uh, then that I came out of your spirit, man. Right, right here. I was feeling it. Right yeah, your here. spirit, man. So I had it up there. Remember the spirit, man. Got it. Thank That's you. where it came up. Yep. You have the Holy Ghost. It came directly from here. Yeah, your spirit, man. That means you have the anointing. Yep. You have the authority to cast out demons. You have the love of God on you. And where things had went bad is I don't have fellowship. At that time I didn't, or I still don't, not yet, but that's on the way. But I didn't have fellowship with anybody. I haven't had fellowship with anybody in two years. So right now is my two-year mark. And uh, You live around here? I'm in Chandler. I, I visited oh, Chandler? Uh, City Light. Oh, okay. Thursday. City lights, yeah. I was out there with them on Thursday. Oh, good. And the, and he was wrapping up the 28th chapter of Acts and said, talked about how Paul was stayed by himself alone with the Lord for two years before he went out. And I'm, I'm right now is my second year. Mm -hmm. This week is my second year. Oh, you're ready to go now. Yeah, exactly. And now yeah. that, but last, last week. Thank you. I had a dream of you, Thank you. saying, do you, do you pray at all? Thank you. You and you knew I did, but, but I said, yeah, okay, you go out, I'm going to say a special okay. blessing for you. And you put a, a wet towel on my forehead, and you said, Lord, uh, his friends that, that are not supposed to be his friends, may they be uh, blocked or something. And I don't remember the rest of the dream, but I think you said, may he have friends now. I don't remember the rest of it. Mm -hmm. But it, I dreamed that of you last week. Oh, you did? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and here's another thing. Uh, I haven't shared really these dreams with people. She's One of the things you're saying Jesus. is get two or three people to verify if it's true, right? Is that right? Two or three witnesses or to verify if these dreams are true. And I purposely don't know. I don't. I try to shake dreams off and don't talk about them. But there's a couple things that happen. Uh, I was here for about a week or two, two years ago. My first couple weeks here, I had this dream. Come up and up now. She's that you're repenting. sitting behind your she's desk repenting. in your you office, legal rights, so you come up and, and I was sitting right in front forgiven. of you, she's repenting. Now you go, you and the Holy Spirit's go. face you was up right up. on the side of you, and told me that Let her go. Let her go. I'm going to wash up. away all the things that you have learned, and I've, I've been in a Pentecostal and the Apostolic Church for the past few years before that, but the Holy Spirit said, I'm going to wash out everything that you ever learned. And this is so you can learn new stuff. And that's kind of, and the very next day, uh, Brother David, uh, forgot his name, Sister Dawn, Brother David, he gave me this, the David Paulson videos. And, on, and when I watched those videos, the guy said on there that, uh, he said that uh, <coughs> it, that the hardest, one of the hardest things to do is to unlearn something. <coughs> now this is good if you can unlearn something then, because the Lord wants to give you new truths. Well, I, he said that the day, the day after I had the dream that the Lord told me, that the Holy Spirit told me that he's going to wipe out my memory of the stuff I was taught. Because I was taught, you know, one God and, and uh, you know, Trinity is wrong and this and that. And I got friends who, who want to battle that thing, you know. Or Come say, right oh, it's this, oh, it's Trinity, and right this and that. The and the Lord has protection over me because I don't give it any conversation. And, and uh, I may learn something. I got that city of your apostolic affirmations. Hmm. I picked that up. Oh, now here's what the Lord wants you to learn. You, you read that? Can you read that? One through six. 
Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be. Come out of there. Also. Come out of there. And whither I go, you know, and the way you know. Come out of that body. Thomas. Get so out unto of him, there. Lord, we know not whither you go is, and how can we know the way? Come out of there. Jesus said unto him, Come out. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. <laughs> Come out of there right now. You just punched that demon right in the face. Get out of that body right now. Breathe out of your mouth. Come out of there, you devil. Come out of there. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. So where I am, there you may be also. Thank you, Jesus. You just made a statement earlier. You said you didn't have any friends. That was a lie. You got a friend that never leaves you. He's touching you right now. The Holy Spirit. He never leaves. He's your permanent friend. The demons told you you didn't have any friends. Got it. That's a lie. They always lie. Everything's a lie with them. Mm -hmm. You don't have any friends. That's ridiculous. You've got a friend right here who never leaves you or forsakes you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Come on now, you're holding back. Come on, crank it up. Thank you. Let your heart go. There you go. He's trying to touch you right now. Come on now. Thank, Thank you, you Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful. There, good. Wonderful. Good. There it is right there. Beautiful, Father. Beautiful, Father. Good. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now you're holding back now. Come on now. Let your tears go. Let's go. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. I love you, Lord. I love you. I love you, sweet Jesus. I love you. There it is. Let your tears go. Hurry. Father, <laughs> hurry up. I, I love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. Tell him. I love you, Lord. God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Open my heart now. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. I love you, dear Lord. Thank you for never leaving me. Thank you for always helping me. Oh, thank you for carrying me when I couldn't carry myself. Thank you for carrying me when I couldn't carry myself. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for loving me when I didn't love myself. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Carrying me when I couldn't carry myself. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for cleansing me. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. 
begins a lovely spirit of song and a right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Release her right now. Release her right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for my new life. Thank you for my new life. She divorces these spirits right now. I'm leaving my old one behind. Today is the end. Come out. Come out. Come out and go. Come out and go. Come out and go. Lose your hold right now. Lose your hold right now. Lose your hold. Come up and out right now. Come up and out right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let her go. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go right now. You get out from right now. You come out of the hips. You come out of the legs. You come out of the knees. Out of the uterus right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. When you just release your right sternum, right yes, you come up and out right now. You come up and out right now. I want Thank you to you. fight in your mind. Thank get out of that body right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, she commands you to go. She commands you to go. Thank These spirits Jesus. that are married to her in that spiritual realm of darkness right now. She breaks every vow and every covenant, every marital contract made to you in that spiritual realm of darkness. Gets broken up for right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let her go. Let her go. Let go. Let go. Take a couple of rest and a couple of Let her go. Let her go. Let go. Let go. Let Come out, really. Come out, Saul. Come out, Saul. Come out, really. Come up and out right now. In the name of Jesus, let her go. Let her go. Let her throat go. Let her throat go. Go, 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 go. Come out, you can't Come out, you can't Come out, you can't Come up and out the legs. Come up and out the hips. Come up and out now. Come up and out now. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. She's not going home with this in her. Come up and out right now. Saul and Aurelio. Saul and Aurelio. Come up and out right now. Come up and out right now. These men have been disappointed, Mr. Hood. You bring up every ungodly soul tie in your life. You saw a really your husband right now. All these men, all these ugly men in her life have got to go. All these ugly men have got to be purged from her body right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. All in the those name bad of things Jesus. you went through. In the name of Jesus. That was training. In the name of somebody Jesus. Else. Release and let her go. That every that cord, every trouble. tie to these men have got to be broken. He should have left every you alone. Every cord, every tie to these men have got to be broken off in the mighty name of Jesus. Let her go. Let her he go. Should have never been on you. Let her go. Let her go. There it goes. Come up and out right now. All the pain, all the hurt, Thank the deep hurt, all the resentment, Jesus. all the regrets, and any bitterness right now. It's got to Thank leave you right now. In the name of Jesus. All of her children saw. Lord, we bless him and we forgive him. Lord, we bless him and we forgive him. And we command these spirits right now to let her go. 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 And we forgive them. Forgive them for carrying any odd against them. Any unforgiveness towards them, Lord. I ask you to forgive me. Anything that Saul did, Lord God, we just forgive you and we bless you. And we bring up your soul ties to them right now. Saul and Aurelio, right now. Come up and out right now. Come up and out right now in the name of Jesus. Release your letter go right now. I'm going to answer your Just call. Come, clean life. Your call call by God. come up and out right away. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. Thank you. you got a tender heart for God. Thank Not too many people have that. Take advantage of it. Thank you, Lord. I wish healing. everybody was like you. Healing your soul. Healing your body. Healing your body. Healing your body. Tender hearts are the ones that need the spirit most. Because they know they'll get the holy. The big mouths of arrogant people, they don't get it. They don't fear them. They control them. You've got a heart for God. Not too many people have that. Because they're trying to distract us. Lord, it's heavy and all over you. And they're still like, I got to take advantage of Yeah, they're still in there. There's some, there's some reason why they're holding on to you. And, um, so they're all. 